everybody and welcome on a cold and rainy night in Paris. I'm joined by Rotty and Todd. Rotty's joining us at the Old Gaming Studio. Welcome to Paris. Are you excited? I'm super excited, Sean. We had a lot of fun last time for I the qualifiers. I know, you guys had a lot of fun at my expense, so I felt this cannot go on any <laughs> longer. <laughs> and to I come. have to make my way over to Paris so I can actually join in this, what you guys like to call top banter. Uh, top banter, we've <laughs> had a lot of top banter in the qualifiers, and now it's time to kick off the season three of Nation Worlds. Very excited for this, of course. Um, we've got 16 top quality teams who are going to be fighting over the next 11 days. And we have eight days of StarCraft action to be bringing you. So we've got a lot of StarCraft 2 coming your way. And Todd, we had a nice nearly train from Cologne this morning, and all you did was talk about Nation Walls all day long. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit too early if you ask me. Uh, no, no, yeah, yeah. It was a nice trip. It's always nice how our travel here builds up the anticipation. You know, we're yeah. tweeting about how excited we are about the matches. Eat some French food on the way. Yeah, like, really, like we get conditioned to cast perfectly with uh, the best food in the world. And then when the <laughs> match begins, that's when... Uh, that's when the real action starts and when uh, the excitement takes over. And we, I feel like this is the only tournament where we cast this crazy as well. You know, where we, we actually like shout. Are you, are you ready? Yeah, right? you ready to get some shouting I'm, in? I'm loosening up a little bit. Listen, see someone shouting somewhere in the yes. studio. That's no, kind of what ready. we do. We've been um, warming up the vocal cords all day and we're going to be <laughs> as silly as possible. <laughs> and I hope you guys are going to have a lot of fun. But before we get into talking about the specifics of the tournament, I think you would have seen the video during the qualifiers. If you didn't, me and Todd sat down to explain the Nation Wars 3. Hello everybody, we're your English broadcast team for Nation Wars 3. My name is Apollo and joining me on this couch is Todd. It's an absolute pleasure to be here, Apollo. Funka will be joining us as well later on to cast in English and it's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to casting with Funka a little bit later on, but let's talk a little bit about the format of Nation Wars 3. It's a 16 country tournament. Every single game is best of seven until we get to the grand finals, which then will become a best of nine. And some of you should know this because you voted in. The players that represent their countries were through public voting, and we have three players to represent each country, as well as a single substitute if one of them cannot make it. So we have 16 countries spread across four groups, four countries in each group, with a top two advancing to the quarterfinals, which then becomes a single elimination bracket as we look for the top four. And the top four will actually be played uh, here in Paris at a very prestigious venue to be announced later uh, this Sunday. Groups A and Group B will be then played in December, on December the 3rd through to December the 6th. And then Group C and Group D will be on the 10th through to the 13th of December before we head into the new year. And what better way to start the year than with a bang with some StarCraft 2 on the 2nd and 3rd of January. That's when the round of 8 will be taking place. That will still be online. And then on the 13th, that's when the live action here in Paris will begin. And that's where the fun really happens at the live venue because Nation Wars 1 and Nation Wars 2 were absolutely fantastic. And we're very excited to be a part of this. Nation Wars has something special to hold within the StarCraft community. I know all of you watching this enjoy it and we're very excited to be a part of it. It's a very unique tournament which I really wonder why it took so long for somebody to finally do it. So I'm really happy that O-Gaming stepped up and uh, it's one of my favorite tournaments, I have to admit. So I'm really looking forward to, to those games and to seeing which country is the best. All right, it's time to find out which nation is the best in StarCraft 2. GG! <laughs> one of the best videos ever, Rotti. Uh, did you fully understand the tournament format through watching that? No, I was kind of lost in Todd's eyes. Like the, <laughs> the moment they zoomed in, I was like, they had me. They had me at Todd's eyes. I, I don't know why they did this to me. It's like only me too. Like you're, you're talking for like 70% of this video, but never a close-up for you. They thought they'd give you a little bit extra. You only had that 30% talk, and so they thought, you know what? We can add to Todd. Let's zoom in closer. <laughs> and we got these uh, beautiful shots of your eyes there, which Rotty uh, fell in love with. Um, but yeah, so that's the tournament format explained. Of course, we'll be going through it um, uh, across the next couple of days for some of you who tune in a little bit later. But we're all excited, and it, it's good to finally kick off the season properly now. Uh, we finished with the qualifiers, and we had a lot of fun in those days. Hey, it was a, definitely a bumpy ride in the qualifiers for some teams. 
for example, Ukraine. And I'm going to say the UK then. <laughs> 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 or they had a hand on the one. Do, yeah, I guess the UK didn't have much expectations like going into the tournament. Like I, I didn't think personally they were going to be able to do well, but they, they surprised. Yeah. They definitely uh, they surprised you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> they they put up they a pretty were. good fight. Yeah, but like Ukraine, for example, they had a bumpy ride for sure. So now they go up in action today in the round of 16. It's going to be interesting to see if they do better and uh, they deliver this time. Yeah, that's right. And I know you watched uh, a lot of the qualifiers mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, no, it was a lot of fun, uh, for sure. A couple of surprising results, but with the qualifiers, I often felt there was like one strong nation and then three, quote-unquote, slightly weaker nations. Of course, upsets are always possible, but I feel this is where the tournament truly starts because yeah. it's much harder to pick winners, even though there are countries that still stand out as just top favorites for the overall yeah, tournament. Yeah. But there is no such thing anymore as one nation that's supposed to make it out over here. Is your bias... For Netherlands, going to well, be as sure. huge <laughs> as his bias for UK was. Well, uh, is your bias for France going to well, be big? Yeah, obviously. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm afraid to talk about my boys too much, you know, because I don't want to fall flat on my face. But there will be some bias, and I'm going to cheer as loud as I can. I'm, that's I'm the excited. That's like, the best thing about Holland Holland plays is going to be really sick for me. Yeah, it's going to be great. We yeah. have lots of, of good games ahead of I us. Mean, we missed the Euro Championship, so we better don't miss <laughs> Nation Wars as well. Nation right? Wars is the second best thing, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, if you guys missed the qualifiers and weren't able to watch them just a couple of weeks ago, let's take a back at what happened in previously in Nation Wars 3. Uh, before the games today, I was expecting uh, a USA and Ukraine finals for sure. Honnêtement, je m'attendais à une Ukraine qui passerait la, la soirée, qui se qualifierait pour la suite des Nations War euh, face aux USA. Donc, euh, au niveau des pronos, ça allait. Premier BO7 où on a vraiment de la surprise, où on arrive au 4-3, où il y a un revive, donc là, ce qui est utilisé des deux côtés. The game turned out to be a lot different than I anticipated with Rainer opening with three kills. Ça a ouvert par euh, Demonizer contre Nathanias, donc on a pu voir le grand Nat euh, en action et, euh, et il a gagné en TVT, donc euh, de très belle manière, c'était euh, très très propre. State carried this team uh, through victory while uh, beating every single person in the uh, Venezuelan lineup. Pour moi, le top move c'est euh, un move de State qui, euh, qui lamine complètement l'armée de, de Thunder, donc c'est dans la quatrième game, et euh, avec deux tiers de disrupteurs, euh, donc, euh, où euh, il en fait un premier qui génère le blink, et le deuxième qui va accueillir tous les stalkers, et là la pop qui chute de 32 pop direct, donc, euh, et qui signe la fin du match. Donc je pense que ouais, c'est euh, ce move-là que, que je retiendrai. The MVP move today for me was definitely Nathanius with his dropships when he did the catch of the three medivacs that when I was casting, I went crazy about it. Nathanius at the play of the day was the MVP for me. Where he actually loaded up uh, a medivac to chase down the opposite medivac onto the island and took out three medivacs, uh, three opposite medivacs full with tanks and marines and actually won the game with that move. That was definitely the best move out of this uh, match. Euh, le best move de la game, je dirais que c'est euh, rencontre euh, Bly contre Vini, Vidi, Vince. On a un moment où on est sur la rampe. Et c'est très intéressant parce que Bly arrive avec ses Zergling. Il monte un petit Zergling en haut pour voir ce qu'il attend. Et il voit qu'il y a un petit pack de Zergling, à peu près le même nombre que le sien, et deux banlings. Il va avoir le temps de redescendre, de remonter un Zergling pour choper un banning, pour choper le deuxième banning. Et derrière, quand il va attaquer avec ses Zergling, il va réussir à prendre une configuration de fight qui va lui être favorable. Donc en gros, il va arriver avec moins d'unités et il va être capable de faire du dégât. Euh, casse, contre, euh, quatre, casse contre Puck aussi. Euh, sur euh, chantier, euh, chantier orbital où il y, y a des disrupteurs qui pètent dans tous les sens et à la fin il y a 49 kills pour un seul disrupteur donc voilà c'était euh, juste une soirée de dingue, on a eu des moves absolument extraordinaires, si vous les avez pas vus bien, allez regarder les replays, nous on s'est enflammés An incredible weekend of Starcraft action we had just a couple of weeks back and those were some of the highlights which we all thought and um, what was the best thing for you to watch? Was it perhaps the Nathanius moment? Did you uh, enjoy that as well? Yeah, that one was very sick. I, I think they actually mentioned most of them. Like the PvP with Pac was pretty uh, insane as well because it looked kind of rough or stated was. Well, yeah, well, kind of those moments as well. Yeah, so uh, lots, lots that 
happened that were really entertaining. But there's a lot more to come as well, which leads us to talk about the groups that we have ready for Nation Wars 3. Finally, we've got the 16 countries that are ready to fight in Nation Wars 3. Today, we'll be going over Group A, and we'll talk about that in a minute. We will be going into Group B tomorrow, and then next week, next weekend, we'll be starting on Thursday with Mexico's group, Group C, and then Group D across Saturday and Sunday next week before we get top eight teams. Awesome lineups. Yeah, it's... Uh Teams are very spread out, you know, you got teams for, from every continent in each group and already looking at the, uh, these countries here that will go up against each other, you're already kind of starting to draw matchups in your head and getting very excited about it. For example, you know, Norway is facing Ukraine, can already imagine uh, Snoot potentially yeah. facing a Bly, which is going to be a, a great matchup and then I think everybody's eyes are going to be turned uh, in particular on the country uh, that they come from. So yeah, yeah. Man, for me, it's going to be France, the highlights where, you know, taking on Australia, Piggy Boy. He's going to grow up a bit. That's going to be a great match. Oh, yeah. Look at all that one. <laughs> uh, some very good groups, for sure. And, of course, uh, the Netherlands, Rotti for you in Group C with Denmark, Canada, and Mexico. Yeah, man, I actually think that's doable for the Bernie boys. Bernie right? We've got a... We've <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a tough group, though. I think it's a tough group. Yeah, of course it's a tough group, but it's not an impossible group, especially you know, if Harsom goes on fire or you know if Uthermal plays as well as we've seen him play in a couple of the qualifiers for IEMs back then. Uh, Jonas is a little bit of a wild card, who's the third player on Netherlands right now, but yeah. I look at this group and I don't think it's impossible. Quite the opposite, even. I, I would almost yeah. rate our boys the favorite. And, of course, Group D with Korea. The Korea team will be announced, hopefully, by the end uh, within the next week or so. We're still waiting to sort that team out officially. Uh, but a great team, of course, New Zealand. I kind of have to, to rep a little bit going into the next stages of this tournament. <laughs> I mean, if you're just going to represent UK. every country that the UK once upon a time owned. Well, I mean, we've got Australia, yeah, New Zealand. You've got quite a few there, Sean. Well, yeah, none I mean. of the countries that... Are going to do well. Particularly, we'll uh -huh. do well. Yeah, I mean, that's our, that's our specialty. Actually, though. we shouldn't say that. Yeah, they would get really upset. No, actually, I feel it feels very open, I feel, like in terms of what teams are going to advance. Like, yeah. sure, you can draw favorites, but mm -hmm. it's not like you look at every group and you're like, oh, yeah, these are the heavy favorites, which I think was the case in the qualifiers. Yeah. Yep. I think it's a great set of groups. And, of course, today is all about Group A with Norway, Ukraine, China, and Taiwan. The first game of the evening is going to be Norway versus Ukraine, and then after, China versus Taiwan. And just for you to understand, it is GSL group format. So it's five games per group, and it takes two days to complete the group. So each and every day that we have, we'll be getting one player, or one team, should I say, one country through each day. So today, we'll find the first place of group A. Tomorrow will be the second place where we play the losers and decide. So three games on day one, two games on day two for each group. Norway the favorite for today, Shani? Oh, you have to be, right? They have to be the favorites. They've been uh, they've two time been, champions. Yeah, they've been very strong traditionally in Nation Wars. And also, Ike is, I think, a player that I didn't even know of before he had that phenomenal run in one of those Nation Wars yep. where Nation everybody Wars thought two. that Norway was dead because Snoot lost or Targa lost. And then suddenly Ike showed up and he played like the best out of all those three guys. So, yeah. And it's a guy that we don't really see a whole lot outside of Nation Wars, but he's always here. So uh, I think this is a very, <laughs> very strong team. Even though, you know, whenever you ask Targa if he's been playing, he always says he hasn't been playing or he's playing Dota or he's weightlifting or he's going back to study. Uh, it's yeah. like, it's one of those. But at the end of the day, Targa is always a very strong player. Well, Snoot is arguably the best Zerg right now in Legacy, I would yeah. say, outside of yeah. Korea. Uh, and then Ike, well, he always performs over here. So this is starting to look at a really good team and definitely, uh, I'd say, one of the favorites. Yeah, these are a lot of very good points, but we definitely need to keep in mind that it's Legacy of the Void and with it being a new game, new map pool and all that, maybe it's going to be a little bit harder for them to do as well as they did the previous season. And also, like, you can say, you know, they won it twice, maybe they're going to do it three times, or like they're, they're one of the favorites to do well. But this time around, South Korea is part of the tournament. So yeah. a lot of people are already theorizing <laughs> that. Like, so who's going to finish second after South Korea? The battle's going to be fierce, but I mean, realistically... South Korea, they are going to be the big favorites. Norway, though, I guess they're, they're going to have quite a bit of pressure on their shoulder, though. Doesn't having won twice. Doesn't Snoot look like one out of a captain over here? He's just like, he looks like the guy that you want him to be your captain. Yeah, Tog is the captain, though. Yeah, but it, like, if I look at he Snoot... He looks like the captain? Yeah. No, he, he secretly is the captain. Yeah, he actually feeds pieces of paper to Tog. Exactly. Telling him what to do. He doesn't want to be in the spotlights, but he's basically, you know... 
He and, rules with an iron fist. And of course, Norway goes up <laughs> against the Ukraine, who came through the qualifiers. We had a lot of fun broadcasting their team. Captain by Bly, supported by Cass and Demarga, who, let's be honest, didn't have the best of days in the qualifiers. It was carried by Bly, but they were very motivated coming into season three to prepare, to practice, to perform. Yeah, they definitely struggled uh, in the qualifiers, I think. So today, hopefully for them, they will have practiced a lot harder, Demaga and Cass in particular, who I don't think impressed much at all in the qualifiers. And it's going to be very important for Bly to be able to rely on them here against a strong team like Norway or even like in this group in general. I think if Ukraine beat Norway here, it wouldn't be the most massive upset, but it definitely be, would be an upset. And uh, they would actually have a decent chance to qualify for the round of eight, even already from tonight. Yeah, it's funny how times uh, change uh, the strength in StarCraft Nations as well, right? Because if this would have been 2011 or 2010, then you would have obviously gone with Ukraine and guys like Kaz and Dimaga were pretty much on top of their game. Now that's not really the case anymore. And Bly is pretty much the player that's posting the best results in Legacy of the Void so far. Kaz, you know, there's a little information there as well. No doubt that uh, he will be prepared after a disappointing year. But it's weird to think about it like that. And then Dimaga as well. It's like the comeback. Well, then if you rely on two players trying to make a comeback, that's often not a good thing to rely on. You'd rather just have steady performance throughout the entire year. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great team. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to see them back playing some StarCraft. They are, of course, big personalities and big players that we've had over the years. And we'll see how well they can do today. In a couple of moments now, we are going to be going, as always, to the traditional captain's interview. And I always look forward <laughs> to these interviews. Did you hear Hux last time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Huck is, Huck is a Huck, right? Like, uh, yeah, Huck, yeah. Huck. He speaks, but he's entertaining. I love to listen to someone who He has, speaks his mind. Yeah, who has a little bit more to say. <laughs> and he, he's not afraid to stir up a little controversy over there. So uh, it's going to be fun. I don't look forward to having to do that myself. Uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be 10 out of 10, super cringe, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, Bly, of course, was very confident. Uh, in every interview last time. He said he was going to all kill every team he played against, and he truly believes he is one of the best players yeah. in Legacy of the Void. And then after Nation Wars, when he played so well, he did back it up with a great performance at DreamHack, where he was able to score high. If you would have told me that Bly would be able to play like a 30 or 28, whatever it was, minute macro game against Parting and really <laughs> make Parting sweat for his victory, I would have said like, well... I love Bly, but you're, you're <coughs> insane. It doesn't make any sense. You know, Bly is going to make yep. 24 drones. He's going to all in. It's going to work or it's not going to work. <laughs> and that's the game. But no, Parting actually took it to distance. And even though he did end up losing that really epic game on uh, Prion Terraces, I believe yeah, it was. Yeah, the gold base map. Yeah, the yeah, double yeah. gold. But he played phenomenal. You know, yeah. it was like, if, I, if you would have hit the name tag, it's like, there's no way that, that Bly <laughs> gets Parting. That just doesn't make any sense. So he's actually looking like a very strong Zerg right and now. And that's going to probably be, the, you know, the, the, the star matchup between Norway and Ukraine is more than likely Snoot versus Bly. Yeah. So it's like a top eight performer from DreamHack just versus DreamHack's caster. <laughs> <laughs> but also against a guy who just won 15K playing yeah. Legacy in China. Yeah. And it's Snoot, you know. Uh, I've always... Even when Snoot <coughs> didn't have the hardest of 2015s, I'd say, it was perhaps even a little disappointing for his standards. Yeah. For me, Snoot has always been absolutely up there when it comes to foreign players. And on any given day, I feel that Snoot has the potential to be the best foreign player so he's still the guy to look out for. I think uh, he's, he's definitely going to be a, a star player. I think the, the, the one is interview ready. Should we go over to the couch? Is it ready yet? Is I Todd ready? It is. I don't think Todd's ready. No, Todd's not ready. Todd, Todd's always not ready. Todd stopped on his way to play a game of Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> he, was go, he, was about to do, he was about to do an interview and then he's like, what? I can play Sergeant Hammer over here? He's like <laughs> <laughs> I can get a game done in five yeah. minutes. Yeah, so uh, we're just waiting for the players and then we will go over to the couch in a quick second. Just some banter. Just some banter. <laughs> Just some banter. I feel one day Todd is really going to snap at all of us for all these hero jokes. I don't think he can take it much longer. She snapped a few times already. It's uh, multiple people, but <laughs> don't worry. You're, you're next in the targets. No. And I hope you're excited for, for a good four days, Roddy. Oh, uh, for sure. It's gonna I mean, even much longer than that. I mean, it's just four days for now. But for now, and then another four next week. And then we have a couple of days off camera, and then we have a few more days here. It's going to be super fun, man. And then 2016, of course, the uh, top eight for the Nation Wars going through to the grand finale uh, at the Olympia, which really looking forward to on the 13th of January. You can still get your tickets for that, by the way, which I'm sure you can ask in chat or just tweet or find out somewhere on the internet to have a look for where you get the tickets from. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that one uh, to go over there. If you would have to make a prediction right now, Sean, who's going to win the whole thing? Which four? No, not oh, okay. really who's going to win. Which four countries are we going to see at the grand final? Uh, race, country. 
What did you yeah, say, country? sir? Country. Oh, country at the grand finals. Top I mean, four? I, I may hope that all races will be represented. Otherwise, yes. you know, it's just like like a Norway, full day of PVZ. <laughs> Norway, France. It depends on the bracket draw, but yeah. Norway, France, uh, South Korea, and uh, New Zealand, obviously. Uh, we're going to go to the couch for the for the captain interview. So I heard Todd and Funker are over there. Hello, guys, and thank you. Uh, indeed, this is the. Uh, it used to be a couch, actually, the interview couch, but it's now just like random seats, like blue seats. They look pretty cool, you know. Colors of nation wars. Not very comfy, but <laughs> not really comfy, <laughs> as Todd would say. Uh, yeah, we'll do. Welcome, Yuan. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Excited for this match here uh -huh. uh, between uh, Ukraine and Norway. Can't wait to see who advances. I made my predictions, and you now did. that Roddy is here and he finished last in the predictions at BlizzCon, <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing if he can repeat that performance because he's pretty bad at it. That was that, that was quite a feat to be to be the last at BlizzCon. But um, do we have the players already on Skype? Are you guys there? Yo. Yes. Welcome, Taga and Bly. Or are you guys? I'm good. You good? Good. Yeah. Bly, good. you good too? Good. Yeah. Okay. Amazing question. Uh, welcome, Targa. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Norway. You guys are double champions. And first question that I want to ask is, why do you guys perform so well in Nation Wars? Uh, I don't really know. Like we were in the past two uh, Nation Wars, we were the better team, and we also prepared a lot more than the other teams. I think so. It's like a combination of being better and preparing better. And, All right. Um, yeah. Um, and would you say, uh, and then uh, Todd will ask a question, do you, do you, would you say that your preparation is as good as the, the year before? Well, the reason I'm asking is because Ukraine, we've got a few games the, of them that you could uh, analyze. Did you, did you do that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we haven't prepared as much as we did last time. Um, like I'm in school, AK is in school, Snoot was busy being a caster and being a <laughs> final, so... Uh, it's a little bit different this time, but uh, I think we're good enough, hopefully. Okay, um, if you've watched this show, you know that my question is always the same. So it's still going to be the same here one more time. I want both of you guys to give me a score prediction and to give some words for your opponents here. So, Targa, why don't you go first? 4-2 for us. And I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Good luck. And... For two for us, and have fun. Ooh. Can we change captains for the next match? <laughs> These guys don't know. What <laughs> no, uh, actually, we we didn't uh, we didn't give uh, Bly any uh, any opportunity to uh, to tell us anything. Uh, you guys went through the qualifiers, so you're playing the you know the, the champions, the, the 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 guy that won the, the two seasons before. Uh, does that does that frighten you a little bit, or you don't you don't care? Like you've been. It was a while ago, like a uh -huh. while. A while so, ago. And it's Legacy of the Void, so I don't think that it's the same team as in Cards of the Swarm. Uh, it's not, like it's such a diff different game, and uh, I guess everything is gonna be extremely different. Did you give a pep talk to uh, your teammates, Dimaga and Cass? Like after after you qualified here for the round of 16, you talk to them. You're like, all right, guys, I really need your help in the round of 16. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be tough. Practice hard and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We shared the replays, uh, analyzed a bit uh, what to do, which maps, who play, which picks. Like so much. Like we analyzed like like a lot. Like really a lot. What about you, Targa? Like in terms of matchups, how much do you think it will impact the match? Are you just confident in general? Like in the past, I remember your interviews in Nation Wars. You always were very confident. You called out a lot of four zeros. <laughs> you said that you were gonna ace yep. pretty much everybody. So it seems like you've changed uh, your speech here a little bit. Well, I did that one time, and that was against Poland, and I said that we could all all kill them, which was true. And uh, this time it's a little bit different. Like me and Aka aren't really playing anymore, um, and I don't know. Like Snoot doesn't even know how good he is in Legacy. So it's very different. Like, I'm confident, but I'm also a realist. Like, I know we can. It's possible to lose this. Yeah, a little bit more of a question mark this year than the years before, where you were uh, way more confident. Okay, uh, I guess that sums up everything. But we do need to know who's going to be uh, starting for both teams. Starting with Bly, who's going to be the first player for Ukraine? Uh, Dimaga. Maga is going to be playing Targa. 
Aiki. Aiki. All right. Aiki versus Dimaga. So we're going to have BBZ. That sounds good. Actually, we didn't ask anything about Aiki. Oh, uh, Aiki is, is Nationwide is a pretty important competition for Aiki, right? Is he is he pumped? Like, is he really really into it, or? <laughs> I actually don't know. Uh, you don't he know. Said he had an, he had, an, he had an exam yesterday. He uh, prepared a bit today. Um, Snoot helped him with some replays, um, and uh, this is the matchup we were hoping for. So, uh, hopefully, uh, he's gonna perform. Okay, Fair enough. Maybe we see the return of Aiki the sniper with some uh, yep. custom made builds here for Ukraine. All right. Uh, thank you guys and uh, good luck. Have fun and uh, give us good games. Thank you. Thanks. See ya. See ya. A pretty nice opening match here. Uh, Aiki against Dimaga. Definitely like, you know, it's a lot of the time the captains will come out first or like the best player because they think that they have a very good chance of all killing or getting a few strong players out of the way. But with Dimaga and Aiki coming out first, it feels like both countries here, they're trying to keep their better players uh, at bay for a little bit more. Yeah. They're trying to test the waters. Even though, I mean, Aiki is, is, a, is a fantastic player. He did like a lot of work for Norway in the past in Nation War. So mm -hmm. I can't wait to see, like, in, not just you know, in terms of build orders, how well these players are playing. And I feel like whoever's going to win here, map number one, is going gonna, gonna to have some good momentum already. Yeah, it's a really good, uh, it's a really good uh, thing that you mentioned because yeah, we've got like mid-range players like Aiki in the middle of the of the Norwegian team, and at the same time uh, Dimaga. Like we didn't mention Dimaga, but he's been winning for quite a long time yeah. now. He's not as the, at the same level that he used to be, but still, he's a really really good player. And I feel like if they can manage to get the first game and then maybe you know take that momentum to go and maybe take a, a two lead, that that would make it for a really really tense match. Dimaga in a bet of a game is always very strong. You yes. know, Wings of Liberty, Heart of the Swarm, Heroes uh -huh. of the Storm, Legacy of the <laughs> <laughs> and now, as much as we're not in beta anymore, it's still pretty early in the game. So it's kind of, I mean, since Legacy of the Void came out, so it's kind of, so maybe we'll uh -huh. see him uh, play pretty well. I think Dimaga always has potential to do some damage. Yep. Yeah, really looking forward for that first game. So you, uh, you heard it. it's going to be Dimaga versus Aiki, Norway versus Ukraine. And I would say, casters, take it away. Thank you very much, Funka. We're looking forward to this one as Eliki, the all killer of Poland in Nation Wars 2, goes up against Dimaga. This time around, we do have interviews with the players talking about what they think coming into Nation Wars 3. First up, it's Eliki. Well, uh, Nation Wars 2 was uh, the best experience of my career, uh, playing in front of the French crowd and uh, having them cheer for me and also winning the tournament, it was, it was amazing. So, yeah, it means a lot to me. It'll be amazing. Um, I'm really hoping that we'll be able to uh, get through the group stages so that we can actually go down there again. Um, I don't know. It's uh, really hard to tell how good people are at the moment because Legacy of the Void is so new. Uh, I think we have a decent chance, but I mean, uh, there are a lot of good teams this time, including South Korea. So it's going to be hard, but uh, we'll do our best. And uh, this tournament means a lot to us, so we're going to practice really hard. Um, I don't know. I mean, I knew the game better back then, but it was also a game that had been out for a while. Now it's a completely new game, so I, I don't feel like I'm that good at it, but I don't think anyone is really that good at it. So, yeah. Um, I think it's a okay group. It's uh, not an easy group, but it's not the worst. At least we didn't have uh, Korea. Uh, Ukraine as the first match is, uh, I think, pretty even. But uh, we have uh, Snoot, and also I think, uh, yeah, we uh, we have a good chance to beat them. Well, I've been playing some, but I haven't really been playing like uh, <laughs> a huge amount. So I've I've kept my level like right below pro gamer level. Uh, but I haven't really been playing many hours a day, so, uh, yeah, I've been uh, busy studying and stuff, but uh, I've still played, so I, uh, yeah, I'm still decent. I uh, just uh, thank you for the amazing experience last time, and I hope that if we reach the uh, live playoffs that you'll cheer for me again. And there he is with the bench in the background and a cute little Norwegian cabin that yeah. he lives in.
It just looks like he like lives on the top of a mountain. You know, <laughs> yeah. Like oversees the, the every the morning he opens the window and like screams into the mountains yeah. and then closes it and does a couple of bench presses. Something like Aurora Lights <laughs> overnight. You know, he, like lives in the most beautiful place in Earth. Plays some Starcraft yeah. inside just because. And of course we've heard from Ike, but let's also hear from Damaga and what he thinks. National War is very special tournament because like. Uh, all countries can participate and show who is the best. L last year was Norway, and we have Norway first opponent. It will be tough for us. And uh, especially it's because of countries, and you, I proud to present my own country. It mean a lot for me uh, because I wasn't in big stage for a long time, and I have no idea what it will be. Uh, to be honest, I don't personally me. I, I can say that uh, I will be the worst player in our team because I have not enough time due to some real life uh, issues. You know, my wife got in the hospital a few days ago, so uh, I hope Bly and Kaz can carry me. I think uh, we can beat Norway if Bly will be on fire, <laughs> and I <laughs> and I hope I can show. Uh, I don't know. At least decent uh, games. Honestly, I have uh, no idea about them. I just know there is uh, many Zergs and Protoss. Uh, so I will, and also Norway, also Zerg and Protoss. Two Zergs and one Protoss. So I will be preparing only ZVZ and ZVP. It's a, a bit easy then to prepare all three matches, matchups. As I said before, I, I don't have enough time to prepare and to be in good shape. I hope so. <laughs> But right now, yeah. I just don't yeah. have enough time. I hope in, when everything will be done and will be fine, I, I just uh, go back to StarCraft. I feel it's uh, interesting, but still in StarCraft 2, um, they are like a defensive unit. It's quite tough right now, at least, to attack with them. But overall, it's o o obviously cool. Just big thanks to everyone, to all fans. Hype, 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 hype! Awesome! First game is on its way. We're going to be loading into it in a couple of moments. Damaga not feeling too confident, but we know he has, you know, the skill and the experience to bring out performances when it matters the most. And he goes up against not the strongest player from Norway, so it's definitely a bit of a winnable situation, but it's a cool opening match. For sure, and I think whenever you're playing in one of these matches, you shouldn't think like, oh, uh, am I good enough to all kill the team? That doesn't really matter. You yeah. just focus on your match, and if everybody on your team wins the first match they play, you always win. You know, it's as simple as that. So just try to get one for the team, and after that, you're just basically free rolling through the uh, through the nation war. Right? If if nation wars was four or five players, you'd be on the team Netherlands. Five maybe. Yeah. Uh, five <laughs> players. You'd be playing for, for them. Four, be risky, if they five? can play for the US, you can play for the well, Netherlands. Yeah, but that's a longer story. There's a reason why I didn't sign up, Sean. <laughs> All right. Actually, I want my nation to win. <laughs> <laughs> Nate doesn't. Uh, it's time to get into game number one here of Nation Wars 3. The very first step on the road to the Olympia on the 13th of January. Here we go. Hype. Ronnie, deliver us the first play introduction of Nation Wars 3. All right, on the top side of Orbital Shipyard, we're looking at the main Zerg base of this old rock star. It's, of course, Dimaga. And down here to the bottom left is the red Protoss player for Norway coming out first. It's Ike. This guy has an absolutely insane win record. You know, during the interviews, we went through some of his previous performances a little bit in Nation War 1 and Nation War 2. This guy has won so many matches. I think there are very few players, maybe not yeah. even other than Snoot or perhaps Targa, because they all performed so well, that won more actual games in this tournament than Ike did. And if you would ask a lot of Starker fans that, he wouldn't be the first yeah. player to jump to their mind. He's like the special weapon of Nation Wars that Norway has. Mm -hmm. uh, managing to, to get the all kill against is Poland uh, in France was huge. Interesting to see Dima take his uh, hatchery, the first one on the low ground, rather than taking the pocket expand. I guess this will allow him to get slightly quicker creep spread, but a little bit risky if this would have been a double gateway opening, for instance, from El uh, from Ike, where we could see some adapts. You know, the cool thing is, uh, as you guys noticed as well during the qualifiers, that this game is still so fresh that a lot of these players, especially guys that don't have a whole lot of time to practice, that are not practicing to win the next remake, 
they've got a very open mind, right? And they yeah. just kind of yeah. do whatever they think might work. And you see some very cool, fun stuff and a lot of variation in the openings, which just makes the game still feel really, really fresh. And very quickly, uh, of course, the, the format's winner stays on for each player, or for each country, should I say. Uh, three players per team, per country. What you, you get one revive. What is your prediction? 4-2 uh, for Norway. Okay. I, I, think I think that Norway will come out on top, but Bly is going to take a couple of names before they go down. I think I went for a 4-1, and I actually think it's a good pick. Obviously, it's very difficult to predict the score before you know who's going to start, but you know, with Aiki starting off over here, I think could, he could win, he could lose, but I think if Snoot is going to be the second player, I just don't see... You know, I, I don't see Snoot lose. I'm a, I'm a little bit of a Snoot fanboy. Os who Os is Os who is to stick together. Oh, we do. <laughs> He's one of us. Yeah, one of us. One, one of, of us. us. We All do right. that chant often when uh, we get a new member to the team. <laughs> <laughs> Eight Zirklings coming out to deal with the very first Adept, which is the very first scout and unit for Aiki to get some information on what the hell's going wow. on. Wow, he's going up to three bases so quickly at the Ooh. three minute mark of just one gateway and a single Adept. I mean, I know pylons are good. Actually, Sean, pylons are very good. I guess it's not even that risky. Yeah, they are good. But he has to, you have to be a little bit careful. I'm not 100% sure if he knows about the speed timing of the Maga. I feel like it's been a while. Uh, since he checked, he is sending in adapts. This one, I think he's gonna I don't let think it he's finish. Checked at all, I so. think he's gonna let this adapt finish, right? Yeah, yep. he's gonna want to scout to see the gas timing. He gets in and sees that gas has just been taken now, and he shouldn't really imagine another gas on the second base. So he knows the timing, and this is a comfortable position, you'd imagine. But his pilot, he doesn't even have any pilots right to next to the nexus, the third nexus of Ike. Let's take okay, he has one. It's kind of uh, funny to see just one a single pilot, three nexus to Twilight Council, yeah. then Forge. This guy! I mean, that's a very... This is a greedy build. He's doing everything before any units are really in play. Yeah, but like you mentioned as well, Sean, is that the gas was kind of late for Dima, so it's going to be hard for him to do a whole lot about it. This is yeah. a map where in the past we saw a lot of great... Look at my Dima that already takes his fourth base, by the way, at the four-minute mark. What's going yeah. on with these guys? That just <laughs> Maybe it's true what they said, that they haven't played a whole lot, and then they've just heard that everybody expands very quickly, so they're like, well... Let's just do that, you know, three well, Nexus at the three minute mark, four hatcheries at the four minute mark. Demog is like, well, you know, he's one minute, one hatch, two minute, two hatch, three minute, three hatch, four minute, four hatch. I guess I gotta take another one in a minute. Legacy of the Voice very fast. If he does that, Nate, uh, <laughs> Nate, sorry. <laughs> if he does that, Roddy. Sean, I'm stepping up. I'm gonna get another baguette. I already had three today. I'm not I even know. lying. You'll have more before. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot more before we finish this trip. All right, so we're getting the Adept Attack Speed upgrade. As well as a bunch of gateways now coming in. And a bit of a funky wall off. Yeah, he's not really sure what Demaga is up to behind the scouting and fog of war. So he's going to send out Hallucinated Phoenix to find out what's up. But a very defensive setup. Yeah, it's a very funky wall, like you said. It's not something you see super uh, f often on maps yeah, like yeah. this. Because a lot of Protoss players will just laugh at any Zerg that tries to be very aggressive to them. It's like, well, <laughs> I've got Photon Overcharge for days, you know. There's no need for a wall when you can just make five pylons and then five Photon Overcharges active at the same time. Mm -hmm. There is a Spire going down. It would be very important for Aiki to spot this. Especially Phoenix because gets shot down. Yeah, especially because he's making a warp prism and pretty much adapts only. Oh. And how many times haven't we seen just like an, an adapt army get murdered by a bunch of mutilists? He's gonna. He's, he's surely moving out to attack with a warp prism on its way. A bunch of gateways finishing up. Surely. I mean, Dima has 69 drones. This basically comes. He throws on a hydralis then as well but and an evolution chamber. I mean, can you warp in enough stalkers when you eventually find out to deal with the spire? Yeah, it all look depends. Look how much gas is saved up as well. Yeah, but what if he attacks before? I mean, the spire is only halfway done. If well, this he's army got a long way to go, right? Yeah. Surely. Yeah, but I mean, if the Mutas hatch one by one, if you warp in yeah. seven, eight stalkers and you pop a guardian shield and you got a couple sentries, I think Aiki could be fine here, but he shouldn't be slowed down by these Zerklings. He can't waste any Whoa, time. Oh, he scouts the spy. It's a big scout coming up from Aiki. He gets to loose Phoenix in. If he's going to go, he's going to go now. Did and he's he also going to start thinking about warping in Stalkers. Yeah, is it? this might have to be one of those moments where he saw it, but did he see No, it? he's still warp, warping in the depths. He has nothing that no. shoots up currently. The Spire is about to complete. So if you're Dimaga right now, by the way, you want to right-click on the prism. That's the only thing you care about. Don't start focusing on sentries yeah. or... The, uh, Here they come. Yeah, that's Stalkers. Four Stalkers, though. That's probably not enough. If I'm Dimaga, I just snipe the prism immediately, and then you just reinforce with everything you can. Uh, you should be in a very good position. Four stock. This is not enough NTI to deal with your. Right, here comes another four. Okay, now it's getting a little more dicey. Now it's very risky actually to snipe the prism. All right, what's Demarge gonna do? He's got a couple of links. He cut off on the left hand side. Mule is coming in one by one. Not a good start here for Demarge. He's got to be careful not to lose him individually. 
36 and here he's gonna fight links. he's gonna fight can he take on the stalkers does he have enough he's gonna take it and in come the mules in comes another warping of stalkers and that is what ike needs at this moment and it looks like the zerglings go down instantly yeah. and likewise the mutilists are going to follow and ike the nation two wars hero for norway comes in game number one and this is looking brilliant yeah adapts are so incredibly good against zerglings and that's just what you see over here the maga does get a couple of stalkers here and there but it's not enough he's gonna have to retreat and whenever you play mutilist against protos and you lose the first big fight yeah you're in a lot of trouble and it's, it's the snowball mm -hmm. blink is about to finish plus two's around the corner and he gets two targets behind this as well. Dimaga does have his Lurker then finish up, but that's, so that's sort of something. But he doesn't really have any gas to yeah. make Hydralisk, not to mention Lurkers. Yeah, he's so low at this moment, and Aiki hits at the perfect time there. Very fortunate for him. He kills the fourth, backs off, does not want to risk the entire game by the looks of it. He's just going to fall back to his double Phoenix and play it safe from this. Uh, a good decision. You like this to to back off. I, I wouldn't mind to see him test the waters a little bit because he won a fight. He knew that Dimaga spent a lot of life as well. He killed a lot of Mutalists. Uh, so I wouldn't mind to see him at least keep pressing a little bit Where's to see Phoenix? what's going on. Uh, there's so many Stalkers over here though. I mean, Dimaga gets a couple of units here and there, but I feel that this is extremely risky what he's doing. Oh, he almost loses another Mutalist there, but Dimaga's time for recovery for the Ukraine to start up the first match of Nation Wars 3. Fourth base coming down. He's staying on Mutalist though, plus one attack coming in. Finally, a, a bit of a change potentially along the lines as he does get plus one attack for his Hydrals and now they do come in. Yeah, so I really wonder what Dima is going to do. Okay, there we do see the first Hydralisk on the way. I was about to say, I wonder what he's going to do if he sees the first Phoenixes. I feel that's a moment where you really cannot afford to make any more Mutalisk, especially not when you're on three bases. That was a very awkward blink by Aiki and a kind of uh, an unnecessarily one, I would say. Yeah, and he loses three Stalkers for here, the Phoenixes. And a change up from Mutalis must be on the cards now. Hydralis production's already begun. And I'm sure once these overlords complete to unsupply cap himself, we'll see more on the way. And here they are. So a big switch up. Yeah, I think right now you just want to kind of stay defensive a little bit if you're Dima, right? And just let this game drag out, make a bunch of lurkers, and hope that your opponent attacks into lurkers without yeah. having any disruptors or storm whatsoever. And well. You don't want to know what happens to Adepts and Zealots and Stalkers when they attack into Lurker, Sean. Oh, I don't want to know, Roddy. Sounds disgustingly filthy. <laughs> <laughs> Things we cannot discuss in this broadcast. Yeah, maybe later and, on. <laughs> and there are almost no limits at this broadcast. That's how bad it is. <laughs> There's not many. <laughs> uh, fourth base now on its way for Aiki, as well as a fourth and fifth for Zamaga, and the Hydralist to Lurker switch is on. I have no idea why Dima keeps trying to take that base. Like, I feel it would be much better to him to keep trying to expand towards the left top side. But yeah. Taking this base at 3 o'clock is, uh, is pretty unusual, to say the does, least. Does Aiki have enough to deal with the Lurkers? There's, there's uh, four of them. There's, there's a ton of Hydras. I mean, it all depends on the engagement. This can go either way. Dima's army is actually looking kind of in the, uh, terrifying. I'm not going to deny that with you. Or Four adepts in the world. That's a good thing to have a warp I mean, on the other he side. He could of lift up the lurkers, but he has to be very careful with how he positions his phoenixes. Well, he loses two or three phoenixes already. He's going to take this fight here to Margaret. And Aiki runs back to a cannon and hopefully the mothership for Photon Overcharge on this position. I don't know where it is currently. And the fight's going to take place. And so far, so good for Aiki. He's keeping his phoenixes alive. Lurkers do bury themselves, or bury themselves, <laughs> should I say. A little bit of both, perhaps. Uh, a little bit of both. And now the damage is coming out from them. Yeah, I feel that Dima, he's fighting very far away from his potential reinforcements. A single Overseer, by the way, would have been super awesome. Also because it messes with the air after Phoenixes, but oh. imagine if you snipe that Observer, then he can't spot those Lurkers anymore. Now these Phoenixes can still lift up those Lurkers, and the Hydra count is really not that uh, terrifying oh, great anymore. Great pickups there, and then the Stalkers jump forward. Hopefully clean everything up here for Aiki, and he is going to push the Marga back despite losing his fourth base. The question now comes, can he pressure the right-hand side while the War Prism goes to action on the left? Uh, depends if there's any uh, the static defensive here. There's a single Spore Crawler and Queen as well. These adapts should do a lot of damage to these workers. Oh, and this is a beautiful kind of... If he takes down both these hatcheries or does critical damage, then the game, despite losing this fall, turns on its head once again. Yeah, because he's going to be able to take out the fourth and fifth base. He's going to wipe in a couple of units, perhaps in the main base as well. He don't want to lose that prison, by the way, so he has to be very careful yeah. with it. And now momentum back in favor of Ike after picking up that fight against the Lurker and Mutilus. A very expensive fight that Demarca ended up losing. Look at the amount of drones that just went down. 15, 16, of course a couple of drones on the right side as well, but this is still risky though. It's still kind of hard to attack into Lurkers. Both players are floating a little bit of money. It's a, not a flawless game from either side, but 
It's a pretty tense one. Uh, this, like, this could still be a throw. Obviously, Ike is in a very good position, but lurkers do terrible things to uh, gateway he, units. It looks like he's going to put down his fourth nexus and just back off and look for a different way to deal damage. And once again, Ukraine and Norway butt heads, but no one comes out a clear winner. He's going to try to retake his fort base in the right bottom side. He's heading his second robotics facility, getting a robo bay as well, so he can start pumping out double disrupt oh. disruptor is probably what I have in mind. We, we, we called them after Nation Wars 3 yeah, the, the, the Desro balls. balls, man. Des balls, I, Desruptors. I, I really can't believe that's going to stick. Desro makes a couple of good hits against some <laughs> team from South he America. He was the first person to do it properly yeah. in Nation Wars, so he, he got the privilege. If if it was you, we would have called them Rotty Balls. With all due respect, you would hit those Disruptor Balls. And then they would have been called Apollo Balls. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be obvious. <laughs> Here comes a push forward from Mikey, keeping the pressure on, killing off a couple of links in the middle. You guys are ridiculous. Hey, we're having a lot of fun. Hashtag Rotty in the club. Let's begin that <laughs> right now. <laughs> Get it out the way. The oh. Only... oh. Oh. Go oh. on, Burrow. Yep, oh. there you go. Okay. Cheeky, cheeky, Kolaris. I can still be a little bit careful, man. He has a lot of production on the way. This, I don't think, is a very good fight for him against hey, all these lurkers. He needs his Desro balls back in action. <laughs> if he, with the, it's just a gateway army. You, you can't deal with this with just a gateway army. He needs to knock it up a notch. And here they are on the way, <laughs> two at a time. <laughs> I refuse to take this serious. This is a very serious broadcast, Roddy. <laughs> Welcome to the old gaming studio in Parry. <gasps> All right, so for Dima right now, it's just important that he somehow establishes a real fort base. There were multiple moments where he was on four or even five bases, but then he keeps losing one. Uh, now again, his army's a little bit out of position. Dima, what are you doing? These are units you can't afford to lose. Where are the lurkers? No, it's, these hydras, if they if he even knew they were down there. Yeah, he can just blink on top of them. Yeah. And so be careful. Lurkers just behind them. It would be an unwanted cuddle for these hydras. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm excited to see the, the disruptors in action. Here come Phoenixes on this left hand side, and this is the only really active, properly full base of Demagra. It's going to get attacked as six drones do go down. Yeah, and he's starting to suffer in terms of income and economy. You can see his minerals are so low. Yep, and just 46 drones remaining as well. This does mean that if Desro, or excuse me, Desro, if Dima is somehow, head, right some here. way, able to max out, his real army is going to be very big. He could potentially fight with 154 army supply. Yeah. Tamaga under so much pressure. I feel if he attacks in a minute, with the good army that he has, but the disruptors are here. And that's where I think things are going to explode no. to, to start things <laughs> off. And here he is going to go. Oh, Whoa. that's a big mistake, though. That's, uh, you're going to need those phoenixes. All right, time for the disruptors, boys. How many are there right now? It's very important for Dima that he splits his oh. units up a little bit. A couple of lurks are in the front. Send them. Here we go. Two of them go in on top of the two. Well, oh, they only got one lurker there. That's not a very good start. Uh, threw them at the, the Zerg army, but killed almost nothing. He yeah. has to wait for the for the cooldown to be Dima, back up again. I feel Dima has to be very aggressive over here. You don't want to wait too long. You don't want to wait until disrupts are ready again. Here comes another one of those shots. Actually, it doesn't connect with that many units. You can move those lurkers even a little bit more forward, I feel. Uh, it's, this is... They're too defensive. I feel like the lurkers are moving. Oh, three disruptors. No, they miss Whoa. again. He's not getting the right hits. You have to get the hits. Otherwise, this unit is useless. And right now, Damaga breaks the fourth. I still feel he could have been a lot more aggressive with the lurker, especially because he has so... What are those? All lurkers again? Yeah, more lurkers, man. Keep going. Well, just then you can just make a couple lurker. phoenixes again right now if you're Ike, because Dima is pretty much as broke as a joke. He doesn't have a whole lot of anti-air. So if you show up here with seven or eight or nine phoenixes, I think you can just wipe out that entire army. Well, as, as broke as Demarga is, I think also Ike is, well, unfortunately. I feel like neither player really wants to win this game. <laughs> 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 Both well, that's, that's one way to look at it. <laughs> Disruptors from the back. So many mission. lurkers. Holy hell. Where is he going? This disruptors, he's, he's insane. They're in the middle of the map by themselves. How many lurkers? Is he? I've never seen this many lurkers, Sean. What is he doing with his disruptors in the middle? I don't know. They're being. What is he doing? Oh, killing Hydra, Sean. Okay, that, well, as, as long as he gets out with all of them. One Look of, at those one links. Goes down. Four links. A second one goes down. Oh. Phoenixes, nope. Oh my god, this uh, basketball player is getting a little nervous as well. Of course, uh, first game in Nation Wars. Yeah, when you're representing the queen and country, nerves <laughs> are obvious at Disruptors. this point. No, you can. Oh, he's so huge. He's oh, like these lurkers. Hits. Pretty much on top of the army. Should be able to get a couple of really oh, good hits off. Gets that's a lurker and a one or two yeah. hydras. If there's one thing I've learned so far in Legacy of the Void, is you don't want to chase an army that has disruptors because it's going to run away, Ooh. it's going to shoot at you multiple times, and it's very hard to avoid disruptor balls when they're being uh, shot. Well, there's no more. There's only, there's only two, and I think they're back at home now, the disruptors. 
Another warp in a unit here. Aiki is trying to get up a new base. Both players starved of resources now. How many lurkers are left? I mean, he made so many that I guess he still has quite a few left, right? Uh, I'll look for you. 14. <laughs> oh my god. How can he still have 14 lurkers? If he runs 14 lurkers into Dima into Aiki's fourth base right now, that base is gone immediately. It doesn't matter how good his yeah. disruptor hits are. Okay, Tomorrow. he's gonna find a. Uh, even one lurker is very scary. Observe it. He's gonna do it. Boom, boom. Did it. Yeah. Boom. Good hit. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> Solid. Yeah, got him, boys. Got him. <laughs> Phone call at home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. That's like when you're in school and you take a penalty on the football ground. You're like, oh, let me do this. Penalty, no goalkeeper. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. All right. Poke forward to the observer again, having a look at the lurker movement. And if Demago breaks this location, he probably takes the game. So a big moment now for Aiki to defend this. I mean, with 14 lurkers, things are starting to look really good again for Demaga. This game has been very back and forth. Demaga should really bring an overseer, by the way. It would be so useful Whoa. to get a couple of good... Uh, or take away uh, the, uh, the vision of the observers. Vision, I feel, is everything in some of these scenarios in yeah. Legacy of the Void. Yeah. You don't just want to show where your lurkers are. It's also going to make it a lot easier for Aiki to get you know reasonable hits with his disruptors. Oh, he's getting closer and closer. He's getting a little too close, Sean. Too close for comfort. Yeah, he can't lose this position. and It's already under siege. And just like siege tank bunny hops, we're going to see that from lurkers now as well. Getting closer and closer and closer. The mineral line has already been compromised. Aiki, what are you going to wow. do? He's not going to try and defend it, but he's got no money to fall back to anything else anyway. I mean, maybe he's just going to run around with Blink Stalkers and pick off units one by one. Uh-oh, he's coming around. It's a very... Emo oh, that's actually very well done there by Dima, leaving two lurkers on the right side of the map. He's going to try to engage... The oh, he's going to shoot his own army. No, he doesn't. Ah. That was very close. Oh, he blinks forward, and this this may be no. a, a suicidal jump forward as every unit's going to fall to these lurkers. Oh, I don't think he's going to be able to pick them off fast enough. And it looks like Demag is going to open up with a win today. GG. And Damaga wins the first game of the day against uh, a nervously, seemingly so, IQ. It was under a lot of pressure throughout. Yeah, I think both players are a little shaky there from time to time. I felt that Ike was in a very Oof. good position after his opening when he wiped in those stalkers on time. Normally, if you kill the fourth base of the Zerg player and you also kill like 12, 13 Mutalists, even though he didn't kill all of them, I guess that was very well done by Dima. Yeah. He, despite losing his fourth base, he didn't lose all the Mutas. And then Ike did get an answer to the Mutalists, but it also allowed Dima to actually get Hydralisk out and eventually get a bunch of Lurkers. But... A uh, pretty bizarre game, to say the least. Not a game like... Uh, I haven't seen too many of those no. play out like that. No, it's uh, definitely a scrappy one, that one uh, was for sure. But it is the Ukraine who take a map away from the reigning double mm -hmm. champions. And we're now going to have to back start to, to worry. Back to back champions. Who's coming out next? So, I mean, we can start to imagine and look at Team Norway to figure out who they will want to start. Targa's in the driving seat. He's got two players to choose from, himself or Snoot versus Aiki. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling it would be Targa, right? You don't want to bring out Snoot too fast. I mean, eventually, I mean, eventually you're going to have to bring out Snoot anyway, but if I look back at Targa's career, I feel if there's one thing that Targa has always been very good at, it's been ZVZ, right? So like, he always hated ZVP. That's yeah. pretty well known. Maybe in Legacy that's a little different, but Targa's always been a very solid ZVZ player, especially because he played Snoot like 27 times a year in all yeah. these Norwegian tournaments. So I kind of feel that if I'm Targa right now, and I know that maybe I'm not in the best shape of my life, I probably look at this and be like, well, do you mind on the ZVZ? I think I can still do this. And him being the captain, I was like, guys. I got this. I got this, yeah. man. I, I would love to be guys. the captain, man, and send myself out. That's like if you, you know, in real life, if you if you're like on the football team, but the, the yeah. trainer gets fired, and then like one of the players becomes like the trainer player, and then like the team is losing. He's like, all right, taking taking the jacket off. I'm sending myself in. Guys. I've got a perfect snore in my head. <laughs> Next week's new star defender for Valencia is Gary Neville. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like the losing of three. Like, These guys, they can't defend. <laughs> takes off the jacket, steps in. <laughs> it's my turn to show you guys what I used to be able to do. Uh, <laughs> so we are now just waiting to find out. We'll have the countdown, as always, in the bottom side for you guys to figure out who is going to be next. Targa has a choice to make. And the countdown is now ready. Ten seconds. Is it Targa? Or is it Snooty? I mean, Snooty is kind of the man, but I really thought it was going to be Targa. So I'd still say Targa, but I suck at predictions. <laughs> yep. The caster comes to play. Snoot is ready. Already bagged himself a Legacy of the Void tournament before casting Dreamac. Hey, what is that emoticon that Snoot has? Or portrait, I should say. Portrait. I have never seen that portrait. I'll have a look for you, mate. 
It's a BlizzCon one, what? says Funker. What a BlizzCon one? It's a, it's a, it's a golden uh, thing. I'm not sure what exactly it is. Um, oh, yeah? What is it? The Spear of Ire. The Spear of Ire? Yeah. How do you get it? And how really? do you get it? I never played the missions. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. We got. I do not have this. We're at BlizzCon. Uh, we're almost ready for this next map. Before we get into it, like we had interviews from the players before, we have one from Snoot as well. So, so what makes Nation Wars so special for us is that, you know, Norway. First of all, we won the first one. We won the second one. But it's just one of my favorite memories from StarCraft ever. Just. It, it was an amazing experience and just uh, playing in front of the cra uh, crowd in, in in the venue there and I just I want to experience that again so it, it means a lot to us. It's a little different now because Legacy of the Void just released so uh, so I feel like there are going to be some upsets and a few strange results but I think Norway has a very strong lineup and I think we can we can win again. Uh, I, I've uh, I've seen the groups I've seen the other teams. And I'm fairly confident that Norway can can actually win again. Yeah, after after I uh, lost quite badly in the third season of WCS, uh, I had to take a little bit of a break, and uh, it's also why I didn't qualify for DreamHack because I didn't play the beta so much. But when I was in China, I practiced so much, and I I feel like I'm doing quite well right now. I feel like I'm understanding the game very quickly, and uh, I think my level is maybe not exactly back to where it used to be at the end of HOTS. Uh, but in general, I'm pretty confident that I'm still one of the best in Europe. So so I would say I'm not really that far away from from the top. It, it means a lot to practice, because we could see it from Solar as well. He just won the uh, Legacy of the Void uh, first Premier Tournament at DreamHack. Uh, and he also mentioned how much uh, that he's actually played. And it helps a lot in Legacy. When you have all of these new units and all of these new weird builds, all of these weird situations, it's really important to practice and be able to experience different types of situations. And I think, I think I'm feeling quite well having played some games now. Obviously, I'm going to practice a lot for Nation Nation Wars also. And uh, yeah, I don't think I can be caught off guard by something weird. I'm practicing really hard right now, so so. I'm really looking forward to Nation Wars. It's the uh, it's the thing that I'm practicing the most towards right now. So, just please cheer for Team Norway, and we're gonna do our best to win again. Can't be surprised by anything, he says. Do you believe him? You will always be surprised. Sean. Always surprises You've in never Starcraft. You have never seen it all. <laughs> well, we'll find out how well he's gonna perform today because it's time for the lead player, the star player from Norway. To, to save them at this point from falling too far down. The next map is going to be Ulrina. What's your experience? How much fun have you had on this map? I know you played a ton of Legends of the Void. How's it going for you? Uh, it's going pretty well. This is a very unique, bizarre map, to say the least, though. I feel like every build that doesn't work on any other map, you can potentially pull off on this one, especially like crazy air plays, or, you know, it doesn't really matter what race you play. But considering the fact that this is going to be a ZVZ right now, yeah. there could be potentially some early pool openings. Like I've seen multiple 12 pools on this map. Did you see that very funny GIF on Reddit where somebody told like, if you build a hatchery on the south side of that little hallway that it blocks it off and then like 12 links just ran by. Was no, I didn't see it. Was but it what is a funny gif? I giggled. It's like, ah, oh, great wall up. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the links just ran by. Uh, could be a very aggressive map. Yeah. I mean, this is... Uh, Zerg doesn't it's really so have a way. It's so close, yeah. though. Zerg doesn't have a way to build like a single supply depot no, or no. a single pile in there. So no. you pretty much always have to worry about potentially a bunch of links running across the map, uh, like speedling all in, maybe even an early baneling. But if you get to the stage where you can get Ravages out, an attack can't really come through there because the corrosive yeah. bile can stop it if you get to that stage, of course. But I feel course. once people have Ravages, you probably want to attack through the rocks anyway yeah. because then the game has already made it past the, let's say, four-minute mark, which is pretty unique on the arena. <laughs> It is, and it's time to load into game number two between Ukraine and Norway, with Ukraine currently leading. And up here, that put them in that lead as the blue Zerg player. It's Demaga. Hype. Very nice to see Dima come out with a win, though. It wasn't a flawless game, but it's still so nice to see the old guy taking one for his nation. Over here on the south side of the arena, we're looking at the main base, one of the best players in Europe. It is Snoot, of course, representing the horse and Norway. He's a very cheeky fellow. Cheeky, Re cheeky. Recently made the transition to uh, caster analyst. Oh, 
perfect and even a bit of a play by play he was loving it he got really <laughs> he got caught away. up in the moment yeah he, Snoot, he loved it i do feel whenever snoon is talking about starcraft you can truly hear the passion oh and everything yeah. he said because when he says he thinks something is beautiful he's not saying that it's beautiful because it was good play no yeah. he generally sees it as beautiful and it's like oh he definitely enjoyed himself at uh, at dreamac in uh, more ways than one ah. Um, sorry for another time, wink, wink, hint, hint. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, he, he had a great time watching the Heroes uh, <laughs> broadcast. Um, anyway, moving on. Eight Zerglings coming <laughs> out for Snoop. I don't get. I don't. I wasn't there, Sean. I don't get this inside joke. Yeah, mate. Don't worry. We'll tell you all about it later. Um, inside jokes are not fun when you don't get them. <laughs> well, welcome to the outside world of an inside joke, Roddy. Um, lots of lanes going over to the other side of the map. Kind of aggressive openings for both. There is a slightly faster Zergling speed from Damaga and also faster Baneless because yeah. of his opener. I mean, if I'm Dima, I want to be aggressive over here, right? Like, you're going yeah, up yeah, yeah. against Snood. You know that Snood is playing way more than you. Snood recently winning a $15,000 tournament in China. Yeah. You're not going to have the approach here. like, mm, let me just like be on four bases and then out macro Snood. I really like Snood's build, though. Snood's build is very good against hyper-aggressive builds, which we see from Demaga. <laughs> And it also could be aggressive himself mm -hmm. if Damaga was greedy. So yeah. it's a it's a pretty cool build from him to open up. But there is a small window here where he is relatively weak. But if he does defend this, he's got a higher drone count. He should be okay, but it's going to come down to these next few seconds. Yeah, Snoot is, of course, not crazy. He knows what kind of a map this is as well, and he probably also knows that the longer the game goes, the more of a favorite he is. So don't go super greedy, silly early game. Yeah. Like, no, just play it safe. Stay on top of what your opponent is doing. This is a map where overlord positioning is very easy, and you're going to get a great deal of information out of your overlords. So you shouldn't be surprised, you know, as a good Zerg player. And we all know that Snoot is a very good Zerg player. He is indeed, and... Demago pokes forwards. Is he going to be able to break this? Well, oh. not like that he's not. He loses five, six Zerglings instantly to a single Bailing Queen, targeting down one of them. And here we go. Snoot sends a couple of Bailings through. Another one gets targeted down oh, here. Oh, two Banes by the... No, not the what hatchery. What is that? No, not the hatchery. Oh, if those Banes would have made it into the middle line, that could have got very, very dicey for Snoot. Because if you're on one base and you end up oh. losing five or six drones, that could have been game-ending damage. Demago, Demago, Demago. And now he has to fall back in from this position, both have to expand. There's always a silver lining, Sean. If What's he does that? that 13 more times, he kills the hatchery. He does, but I don't think he'll have 13 more tries. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> have you ever Somehow. seen it? No. No. There are always surprises, Sean. Just keep launching Bale into <laughs> that hatchery, Demago. That's the only way. A little bailing drop. TLO would do it. TLO would. <laughs> TLO is that type of creative guy. He'd see, he'd see the potential. But here we do have now the expansions coming down for both players. Snoot. And Demarga, not too much difference between the both of them. Yeah. I mean, right now, I love what Snoot is doing. He's like, all right, you know, you were the aggressor, so I'm just going to expand over here. My expand is a little bit faster than yours. Yeah. But he also spots with his overlord. So there is there's no pressure on Snoot right now to make a play. And for Demarga, there's also not really a pressure for him because yeah. he knows that if he makes another big move, that would be a massive commitment. And he puts himself in a very awkward spot where he pretty much has to win the game. So he said he's going to try to get a small favorable yeah. trade here by trying to pick up this queen. But this it's not working There's out. There's three queens for Snoot, one for Demarga. It's a big, big difference in terms of production and creep spread that we now see. And that's because Snoot did lead into the next part with a slight advantage due well, to him being the defender. Why are the drones not mining, Sean? That's a, it's a sloppy mistake, Roddy. Let's be honest. A couple of seconds. Uh, not too bad. Fortunately for Snoot, he did yeah. see it in time. It's kind of nice how he already mined all the drones and he didn't have them just long distance mining, but he actually just kept them in the natural yeah. so they will all bring their five minerals immediately. I think Demarca is probably going to go for a follow-up attack. I think he realizes the position he's in, which is an, uh, a disadvantageous position. And single Zergling, not going to... Whoa, no, well, maybe no. <laughs> yeah. No, he's not. I like the Roach one by Dima. Dima's probably never going to go up to Leia, right? Uh, Snoot is going to no, get no. his Roach one as well. But if I'm Dimaga, I would maybe even transfer a bunch of drones from my main base towards my natural to make it seem like my natural is very well saturated. Yeah. And then just make a big two-base Roach push and hope for the best, which would still be very difficult because of also because of all the queens that you just mentioned. Queens are very strong defensively, so if Snoot would see an attack coming like that, he has a bunch of energy. Yeah. Could maybe transfuse the spine, but I feel that's the you know that's probably the best play right now he, for Dimaga being down seven it, workers. He's still just you know adding on workers. I'm surprised. I, th I really thought he'd go for an attack here yeah. at this point. But if you look in at what Snoot's doing, it, it more so seems that Snoot's going to be the one to do it. 
Yeah, Snoot is indeed making turn the roaches. So okay. it's going to be Snoot to uh, flip the switch. I mean, well, there you go. Demag is going to do it himself now. I mean, that's not bad for Demaga. I mean, uh, he no. has a few roaches less, but it takes a little bit of time for Snoot to, you know, rally his forces across him. Oh, it's 15 right now. It's very important for Demag that he spots it as quick as possible. Makes nothing but roaches. Don't make drones right now, Demaga. You need only roaches. A uh, Ravenger is morphing as well. That's interesting. Yeah, for Snoot. Just going to go. Uh, well, I don't know how many he will add on altogether, but now that's a great scout there yeah. from Tamaga. He sees Roach has been added on at this point. Adds a drone. I think it's very single careful. Spine He's going to take a third. No, Dima. He's about to get hit by an attack, which I don't think he can hold at this moment. I mean, Army Supply is very close. Maybe Snoop doesn't want to commit either. Well, very uh, bold move there by Dimaga, but it seems to be playing out very well for him. Snoop, of course, is going up to three bases as well. Did Dima see that? Can no, not yet. Okay. No. Not, not yet. It's six additional drones for Demaga. Who's going to attack who first? Snoot does have a bigger army and better and it has more workers, workers yeah, as well. <laughs> better workers. But it is, as mentioned, <laughs> hard to fight through here. Crossy bounce from both sides is going to be effective. Whether Demaga's in position or not. No, he's not, so... A little bit of damage on these overlords. <coughs> of course, you don't want to end up losing an overlord over here to these Ravagers. It's very risky to attack. I don't think Snoot really wants to commit to it. I mean, we have access to all the numbers, so it's very easy for us to see. But whenever you play a game like this, a ZBZ, yeah. even though Snoot is probably feeling like, you know, I did all right early game, right? That was pretty solid defense by me. I yeah. didn't lose a whole lot. It's still hard to put it exactly in place how good this game truly is for you. You yeah. know, We see all the workers throughout the entire game, and so we know that Snoot is in a very reasonable position. Snoot probably likes his position, but also doesn't like it that much, and he wants to go for a crazy attack. Wow, that's a good snipe. Yeah, he's been killing both. Well, both of them have been killing overlords through the middle, but at the moment, it's Snoot <laughs> with a 10 worker advantage. Demarcus caught up a little bit in army supply, but not for much longer here. As overlords finish up for Snoot, we're going to see that really scale out of proportion. There's more and more units are going to be added on. Both now starting to plus one attack. Very similar. Yeah, Very similar. There's well. definitely been leads for one player, then a lead for another player, or the other player, and then they kind of been trading that leads without really knowing it, as you've said. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, at the moment, still a slight advantage for Snoot. I must say I'm a little bit surprised that Snoot went for this map. I feel whenever you go for a crazy map pick like uh, Arena, you, c you have something in mind, no? like uh, a certain way that you truly want to play this game. But other than just defending the first attack, I haven't seen something very special yet. So I kind of felt that if I was, you know, what you normally expect from Snoot is to see a map like Dust Towers or... Oh, that's a good... Oh. Oh, that looked very cool. It looked awesome. Yeah. The, 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 landing, the landing strip of <laughs> corrosive piles. <laughs> Whenever you say landing strip, Sean, <laughs> I do not think of corrosive piles. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> that's why I said it. Uh, <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> uh, but right now, as you can see, just both players starting to build up. One plus one attack is going to finish a little bit earlier for Demarga. But still, both players on edge to whether attack or not. And we are going to move up to where both players so are on a decent economy and decent income. Now, you've seen quite a few ZVZs at DreamHack. Wh what do you think is like a good mixture between Roaches and Ravagers? How many Roaches do you want to have? How many Ravagers do you like want to have? Like 50-50. Yeah, 50-50. Yeah, 50-50. From what I've seen, uh, a good, a good amount is 50-50. And where do Hydras fall into place? Once you start to get to like 180 supply and get comfortable. Okay. Well, I do not feel that this is a fight that Dimaga should take. It really looks like Snoot's army is quite a bit bigger over uh, he's here. He's got a lot more, a lot more Ravages in this fight. And Crosive Files are destroying Dimaga at this point. This oh. is a one-sided fight, no doubt. Demaga gets up and close and personal, but I don't think it matters. He got absolutely crushed here. You saw how well it was done by Snoot as well. He moved all of his units outside of those corrosive vials yeah. from uh, Demaga, and he was already looking a little healthier. Had a better engagement, had more units actually there in place fighting. Yeah. And he had way more ravages as well. Yeah, and, and this is a, a very easy fight for Snoot, who's going to march forward, pick up the last remaining roaches, and looks like he's going to tie it up for Norway. GG is called. 1-1. One, one. Well done by Snoot Wale. That was a good game by Snoot. I hit a hydralisk with my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! <laughs> you. Ouch. That hurt. Hydra, the heart counter to Apollo. If you meet him on ladder, guys. You yeah, know. you know what a build is these guys. That hurt, actually. I'm not sure what I actually hit. I think it was top of his head. Uh, look at this. This is the thing that uh, Snoot and those guys won last time. Nation Wars 2, first place trophy. Now here Looks with us. Looks awesome. Um, you need to make perfect use of this quite often. It's the Wale button. Do you know, <laughs> really? do you know whose voice it is? Moman. Of course. Yeah, it yeah. had to be Moman. 
Wale! <laughs> French style. Uh, we are going to go to a very quick break uh, in a second. I think we find out the player first, and then we'll go to the break. Um, so I'll mm. wait for that to see who's going to be chosen. What um, do you think it's going to be? I think it's time for Bly. I Bl think Bly? sending out Cass is very dangerous because okay. Snoot is obviously favored against whoever, mm -hmm. but I think Bly feels that he's good enough to take out Snoot. So this is kind of like the clash between the two players that are... Two star players. Yeah, the two star players, I'd say. I think sending out Cass is wasteful at this point because I really do think Snoot would play around with him. Mm -hmm. So you send out Bly. You know, Bly wins in his mind. Why weren't you the captain of the UK? You've got Yo, all mate, these I sick know, plans. I know, don't rub it in. <laughs> you, guys, you could have coached those guys that to, was an emotional to day maybe me, victory. That was an Apollo. emotional day. We, uh, you know, boombox, mix, and clad the lad. <laughs> 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 clad the lad. We had a great day with the UK. Unfortunately, Betrayus was too much for us. Uh, but we took him down once, so we were happy. <laughs> That's what Nation Wars does, though. It, it riles people yeah. up. No, I'm I, mean, sure I, I can't, I can't wait for Holland to play. It's going to be amazing. All right, so let's see who's going to be. Score 1-1 one, one right now between yeah. Norway and Ukraine. I think I'm with you, though. I think it's time for the clash between the two titans of these two nations, Snoot versus Bly. Yeah. Bly had a great <laughs> run at DreamX. So, so very impressed with yeah. how he played yeah. it. It wasn't just the fact that he made it into the playoffs because he's done stuff like that in the past, but he actually played really well. You know, In the past, we always teased Bly he about did look very uh, good. all that he did you know, with the Roach all-ins. And he still does it. And they're actually way better now. Like Roach Knight, you know, that's a build that Bly has always love but it's way better right now because the Nidus network is actually and indestructible. Knowing how Bly thinks and uh, how he you know perceives himself in the StarCraft community, this is a great opportunity on a big stage to have yeah, a yeah. shot at the number one yep. player outside of Korea. And I know he'd love that opportunity. So that's the way I'd go with my predictions. No, I'm with you. Bly is also a player that has often said that he feels that he's a little bit underrated, right? Like he's yep. better than people think he is. So is it going to be Bly versus Snutta? No way. Really. Bye! Coming out to take down Snoot. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for this Zerg versus Zerg. Hope you guys are as well. We're going to take a very quick break to get the players in game and to prepare themselves. And when we come back, Bly takes on Snoot. Welcome back, everybody, to Nation Wars 3. Todd, you're too tall. Welcome back. It is time for game three of the Ukraine versus Norway. As you can see all our flags. Before we jump into it, Make sure, guys at home, to send in your pictures and tweets of how you're watching Nation Wars 3. So hashtag NW3 and tweet living room pictures, bedroom pictures. Bath pictures. Bath pictures are probably the highlighted pictures Jacuzzi. if you want to send them. Jacuzzi pictures, shower pictures. However you watch Nation Wars 3, you let us know. Here's some through already. So uh, hello, Helen. Um, at the Sugar Tits, <laughs> StarCraft <laughs> hype, watching Nation Wars whilst crawling through the campaign. Hashtag NW3. Send yours in, and we will put them on the show. I just love like the we're ID. doing the qualifiers. I love the ID. She's from England. I've seen her tweet before. And a pr pretty nice desk as well. Yeah? That was, yeah. yeah. Double monitor, man. It's 20 double monitor. I feel like... 2015 double monitor is the standard, but 2016 triple, triple monitor. Triple yeah, you need to raise the standard. stakes for sure. And then the year after, it's going to be four. We're almost ready to jump into this game. Before we do, like the other players, Bly had some words to say. The things that I can play for for Ukraine, I can like instead of playing like solo, I'm playing with my team Ukraine, Kass and Dimaga. We playing for like nation, which is mm, it's on our level, I would say, like. It's really on a roll to like if we get like two top four, um, that's a big, big thing for Ukraine. I would say I didn't had that feeling like for a while already, like for a few years, and I miss it and I wanna repeat it. <laughs> so that's gonna mean that's this will mean for me that uh, I will enjoy it like really hard, like, like so much really. I I remember old times. When I was playing in front of a big uh, crowd, and it was awesome. It was it was just best days in my life. French France is like I, I think the most active overall in Europe in the whole Europe, maybe even in the whole world. I don't know, like, like but what I see is like so much French. 
French fans like really much. And I want to tell you guys that I hope you're cheering for some Owens, and uh, I will try to show you some good, good games. We are all old school, like really old school, <laughs> the, the oldest possible old school. So I feel good, like, yeah, I know them for like five years already, so it's quite a while. Uh, of course, I have to continue because I'm, I think I'm in the best shape right now of uh, Kass and Demaga because they just recently started to play and Demaga was inactive for like months and Kass started to play Legacy of the Void only one month ago so I have to carry a bit like or a lot but still they're both really good players and they can I like I'm sure that like when luck is gonna be on their side they can even for zero so uh, I have a good backup I would say no, I don't afraid of Koreans at all. So I don't know how to play this game yet. Uh, yeah, guys, thanks for cheering for me. I'm really, really happy that like for all the tweets while I was a dream hack, like all the supporting tweets and uh, all the stuff you were telling me. And I hope you will cheer for me same at Nation Wars. And I hope even more. I'm really trying hard. Uh, for the next six months at least, till Koreans are really bad. Uh, so. I will try to get top one for for now. Thanks. Hashtag Bly on fire. Top eight at DreamHack Winter, and currently six two, including qualifier runs. Six wins, two losses, and Nation Wars three. Really, Ukraine's uh, Ukraine's best player. Yeah, he is, uh, and I really like what he said actually about you know how important this tournament is and what we would mean for him to play in front of two thousand persons uh, at the Olympia yeah. for the finals and yeah, before I expand on that actually we're gonna be playing on Dust Towers here Correct. so w one of the maps uh, I guess that neither you or me will know too much about because oh, actually you play Zerg I played a lot in ZVZ so I guess you'll, you'll let us know what's happening absolutely man I'll, I'll do my very best it's time to see which nation here can go up back into the lead as currently, it was Ukraine that started at 1-0. Snoot tied it up 1-1 with a victory over Demaga. And here we are loaded into Dusk Towers. As up here to the north, playing for Ukraine today, it's Bly. With a very early extractor, which we'll talk about in a second. Todd, give it your French best. This is the English stream, though. <laughs> but do it as if you are a Frenchman, which you are. All right, starting in the bottom side of the map here, playing as the Red Zerg, it is, of course, Team Liquid Snoot. <laughs> Do make sure to send in your tweets, remember, hashtag NW3. Send them in how you're watching Nation Wars 3, and we'll show it on the show. But looking at the builds, yeah. super hyper-aggressive opening coming out from um, Bly up here. This could be a disaster here for Snoot if, uh, yeah, I mean, no matter what, it's going to be really tough for him to hold this, like... The Maga is going to get across the map very quickly, and this could do a lot of damage. With the gas that he's getting, seems like he might want to just go for speed here. And I'm a little bit worried here, looking at Bills. I mean, we have Link starting on one side when Spawning Pool is only starting now here for Snoot, so he's going to need a yeah. Helico hold. I was going to say, uh, Bly, he spoke a little bit you know, in the interview about how what it would mean for him to play in front of uh, 2,000 people at the Olympia right now. We're in the round of 16. There is 48 players across 16 teams. Whoever qualifies for the finals is only going to be yep. down to 12 players. Everybody wants to Ooh. make it to there. And Bly, he's chosen. Sneaky, sneaky. A sneaky Just one thing you know about Dust Towers. Look how long and hard it is to get your overlords into a good position. So if yeah. you don't drone scout, you've only got the overlord, which you don't drone scout in this matchup. And therefore, Bly has decided to go for this punishing move of Zergling speed heavy to destroy Snoot, who's gone Zergling speed first, but he has no idea, hasn't seen any Zerglings, and is gonna get surprised. Look at this, Bly waiting patiently around the corner, is gonna launch himself in a minute, and does Snoot have enough micro, does he have enough units to be able to stop this? It's just as if Bly knows the overall placement here that yeah, will be around really here. Sick. This He's is really sick, this is really cool. Around. Really, really Bailing cool. Nest going down but Snoot is already preemptively building links. He's already building a lot of links. I mean, he's playing Bly. Like. He's playing Bly. He's playing blind and he's playing Bly. But he's choosing to build a lot of links anyway. 
And here he goes. Oh, that queen was out of position here. He's going to get surrounded pretty much immediately for Snoot. It's so. a good start, but he's going to be so surprised with how many lings that he's run into here yeah. from Snoot. But Zerkling Speed isn't done yet. He can play Ring Around the Rosie to begin with. That second queen could get surrounded here, but Lynx are going to be helping it. So Blind no, not going to choose to commit here just yet. Bailing this finishes, and Snoots is going to start morphing. And Bailing, he pulls drones. He knows that if he buys a little bit of time here, his Bailings are going to give him the victory. Does he have enough Lynx here already, though? Does Bly already have enough? The queen's doing a lot of damage. Three this drones go hold. down, but it is a hold for now. It is two base versus two wow. base, but who? He's currently in the lead. Snoot has circling speed. Snoot has bailing capability. Currently, Bly does not. Yeah, I think he. But I mean, he's got two queens already. Does Bly have them as well? And those bailings. Both got have two. Well, sure. Snoot has three queens. Bly about to be at three. The only difference is that the gas and the bailing nest is not currently down for uh, for Bly. Yeah, it's all about that drone. Very scouts. close. Both players with the same number of drones, but three more are about to finish here for Snoot. So he's gonna take a three drone. Oh, he actually starts more. He doesn't think that there will be more links from Bly, but there is quite a few links right now being made from Bly. But Snoot having Bay links back at home, he's confident enough right now to dr be droning up. And I think this, these links here attacking from Snoot, he doesn't expect to do any damage, but he wants to see if there is more links on the way from Bly, so he's going to be able to realize it. So currently Snoot takes a lead in this game in terms of infrastructure with his lair on the way and also the drone count. So a better setup from the Norwegian, who I cannot stress decided to build Lings continuously anyway, whether he was going to plan an attack of his own or not. That was the key factor in defending a build that was meant to pretty much beat a lot of other openers from Zerg. But here we do have Blythe going to poke forwards. He's not going to get inside here, so he's going to stay in the dark. Balin Nest eventually comes down for him, but such a late layer. Yeah, Lair is so fast here for Snoot, and he's already on double gas here that he took in the main. I think he even he's on four. Did he take the gases on his natural? Yeah, he did. Yeah, four. Yeah, so four so gases, Spire yeah, plays I mean, looking very likely. And he's going to be so strong. Even though, he, in terms of minerals, like Snoot is kind of broke, he has a nice drone lead. This could be an easy game here. Well, he there. gets a queen, though. Bly does find himself a queen out in the middle of the map there. That's a good snipe, at least. But yeah, he is far behind. Leia finishes up. Spy is more than likely going to come down instantly now for Snoot. And then, looking at what Bly has, he's going down a very similar pathway. But minutes behind. Yeah, he's so far behind. Like, I don't know how Bly's meant to catch up here. It feels almost as if he needs to realize he's facing a Spire. Yeah. And maybe play with something else, you know, uh, some Hydralisks at first. Yeah. And then down the line, some uh, Infestors or even master bunch of Queens. Get some Spores, take a third base. Yeah. I wonder if Snoot actually will commit on Mutalisks. I guess he will oh, yeah, wait and like see it. what he's on first, what, what he's up against, I mean. Yeah. And if he sees that he's up against Mutalisks, obviously, like, it's very hard to transition. But then if it's a regular, you know, ground, roach, ravager into potentially yeah. hydralisks, then maybe he would transition. But Spire against Spire here is going to be the choice. It just feels like Bly's playing Phoenix against Phoenix, and he's got like a lot less Phoenixes than his opponents. Usually it's yeah. just a disastrous situation. Yeah. Look at the gas. Just look at the gas. Yeah. Snoot has got so <coughs> much more. He started mining it so much earlier. Um, so a, a fantastic position for Snoot to put his country in the lead in this best of seven. But we'll see if he can maintain that and what Bly can do against it. Because Bly now with an Overseer and Changeling is going to move forward and start to realize the position he's in. He's going to see a Spire completed very shortly. He's going to see Mutalus on the way very shortly. And now he's got to judge what the proper reaction to this is. And to be honest, when I go in like this and I see that I'm behind like this, I know that I'm in trouble. And it is very difficult to do. You've got to outplay your opponent now. And if Bly is on fire, then we have to see it today. I think the only thing that's going to be on fire here most likely is going to be his base in a second. Even yeah. though, uh, I guess, if there's no turn, it's going to be pretty hard. But so now he, he knows like out. he's pretty far behind. He's going to try and race up his gases on this third. He's not getting any spores or anything. Bly's staying very patient. I think he knows that Snoot is most likely going to go for the overlords that are out on the map yeah. first and foremost. So there is no rush just yet. And here comes Bly's first couple of mutilists, seven of them indeed. And at this point, it becomes a, a game of clearing up scouting and, and trying to get one over your opponent, whether it's going to be a Zergling run by, Mutalist sniping in an extractor, finding a weakness somehow, but uh, cannot stress how good of a position Snoot's landed in. Let's see if Bly can get enough. Oh, he's, oh, he's already defense. switched. Uh, I mean, Snoot's already switched out. Yeah. Roach Evo straight away. I like it. I think like not getting any upgrades for his Mutas and transitioning now with how ahead he is. I mean, he just supply block Bly here as well. 
It's gonna be really good. Bly thinks that he's gonna be a long-term spire against fire, uh, spire here, most Is likely. Is Snoot going back? He, he starts the carapace upgrades. He starts yeah, more That's weird, actually. And Bly is even going for an infestation pit. Um, maybe sure. uh, maybe Snoot didn't fully understand what he was up against. He didn't expect Mutilus to be in play, so he was gonna yeah. go to a few, then switch out. But he goes back to, to dedicating. But the infestation pit, as you say, if he grabs the early infestors, that is one way to fight when from behind. If he can squeeze out infestors, land a fungal against a player who is dominating you, and then go that way. Hive sure. just started for Bly. Cool. Not sure what he's going to go to there. Parasitic bomb? If you can land. Do, yeah, fungal yeah, I mean, and it's viper. It's yeah, I, I'm not sure if that's his aim, but I guess he's starting an infestor here without pathogen glands. Yeah. Oh I my mean, god. One, one hope, one yeah. fungal, that's one viper, takes. boom. Ends up Snoot's Mutalisks. One single parasitic. God, that's. Bomb uh, to, to kill them all, Apollo. That's how it goes. I feel like uh, Bly's played in an old James Bond. He's playing Goldeneye and he's about to find the Golden Gun. <laughs> and it is a combination of the infestor and viper. and. If he lands it, it's going to destroy a lot. Yeah, more mutas being made now. Uh, he doesn't. I mean, he doesn't even take that many vipers. He just get like two no. or something and try Especially to land some good ones. Especially because he's got mutas of his own. He can yeah. run in there with his mutas as well. And the mobility too is going to be insane because viper is another flying unit. It so. almost feels like he'd have to do it defensively though, right? Yeah. I don't think he can move aggressively with it, but we'll yeah, see. Yeah, I don't think. And uh, the thing is though, Snoots, he's not expecting it at all. He's not putting no, any effort no. into scouting right no. now. He's just messing more and more mutas. This could be a disaster for him. Yeah. So high finishes up, three vipers on the way. More and more mutalists. If he lands this. I think we're going to shout louder than the French casters <laughs> because this this is insane. This yeah. is if it's he such hits a bold this. move. I'm surprised that Snoot played this passive. I'm not sure what he was afraid of. Maybe he thought yeah. that Bly by a certain timing could have infestors with <sighs> pathogen glands, but the fact that he's not How scouting he... at all. Okay, so for anyone who doesn't quite understand what's about to happen, is that Bly has got a inf single infester with a fungal growth by now, and if he even if he uses it with a fungal growth, he traps the mutilus in one position. Vipers then come in and use their new ability, Parasitic Bomb, which does splash damage to air units in a, in a, in a very small area. Yeah. And then has his own Mutalist to come in. It's like this triple combo attack. I think even without the Parasitic Bomb, if he engaged with his Mutas and then use on Snoots, Maybe the Parasitic the Bomb, Snoots cannot stay in place. Because then if he's fighting, yeah. his Mutas are clumped. How but if he's pulling back, his Mutas are clumped as well. Yeah. So picking the one Muta that Parasitic Bomb was casted, or two yeah. or three, uh, on, it's gonna be so hard slash close to impossible. Yeah, and even a follow-up of the Ultralis Cavern, we'll see if that can come into play. But somehow he's got to find a way to land this. It's gonna be so difficult. This is this is triple expert, high level, not really easy to do move. Yeah. <laughs> the Infestor is coming in as well as the Vipers here. This All is right. gonna be the most important time in this game. Let's see if Bly can land it. Fungal! Ah, two Only catches not good two. enough. I don't even think he's got another Fungal Snoot in is that trying Infestor. to split. He's trying to play split here. Yeah, so one of the uh, oh, mules gets he, caught. He picked it up immediately here, removed the Muta that was hit by Parasitic Bomb, but another huge chunk of Mutas here by Snoot gets hit, but he split perfectly and surrounds the army. He surrounds with air units somehow. <sighs> he couldn't Snoot with a sick defense. Yeah, that was really good by Snoot. He wasn't able, uh, Bly wasn't able to hit the, the, the wonderful triple combo, but he gets some Parasitic Bombs off, but it's not good enough. And both blew back to Mutalist. They, they go back to the sky here. Bly's trying to get another Viper out. I feel like 99% of players in the world would have lost right there if they were in Yeah, shooters. that was like, really good. The execution was so insane. I would have rage quit like immediately after. Oh. That was such a sick hole. Oh my god, Snoots. What a guy. But behind this, we've got uh, Ultras here that could be made from Bly. Infestation pitch yeah. is going to start for Snoot now. Yeah, Snoot quite far behind in, in, in that tech. If you're on Lair tech against Ultras, like, shouldn't you be in quite a bit of trouble? I guess if there is enough Queens, plus Infestors, it's going to be really hard for Snoot well, to win, even with Mutas against, th like... The thing is, is Snoot's banking on, on an air win. On the right-hand side, the hatchery is going to get cancelled by the Zerglings. It almost feels like Bly, his reaction time and knowing what to do, almost like he might have a, sli a slightly better uh, knowledge of exactly how this matchup plays out at this type of level, where Snoot might not. I'm, I'm not, not sure about that, but... It was a cool reaction from him, and yeah. he's landed in a decent position. And yeah, Spores Ultralis going are going to be crazy. From Snoot, by the way. A little bit over the place. He just made a whole bunch of Spores, and another cancel on that base. Snoot looking to try and expand and take a f uh, fifth 
Yeah. Earlier than uh, Bly here. And he's going to be able to here so far. When are we going to see Ultralis from Bly? He doesn't have to make them now. I mean, he's just—he's like got so much money. Yeah. Just—I don't know why he hasn't built a couple of overlords and then just maxed out on ultras. Well, um, he needs. I think he wants okay. to wait to see exactly what he's up against and then decide. I wonder if these ultras can win in the game though. Ultras I think against Zerglings are going to be pretty good. That's for yeah, sure. And, and the combination of the the fungal, which he's built up quite a few infestors. Okay, this base is just never going to go down, is it? Well, these three bailings are trying their best to help but out. Bly sniping. Uh, ooh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Some good banings there, detonations, yeah. but that base on the left hand side is going to be sniped here. Both denying each other's fifth base. Six Ultralisks coming in. I'm getting a little bit worried for Snoot. Can yes. he combat six Ultralisks? It's going to be tough. Like, I'm not sure how he's meant to exactly. Well, he's fine. Oh, Bly's finding himself. Oh, in the hatchery is very low already. Yeah, yeah. I now, guess the Vipers uh, got the energy from the hatchery. Well, now Snoot sees the Ultralisk for sure. And the Queens. Starts his own Ultralisk cabin, but he's not ready yet. And this is a, a big timing window until Ultralisk of Snoop's own can come out. Is Bly's composition better here? 26 Mutas, 2 Ultras, 9 if Queens, and 3 Vipers. The seconds. only threat Bly has is the air. Yeah. 41 Mutas yeah. from Snoot. So it depends on the Queens, the, the, the split of the Mutalisks. Spore calls everywhere to make sure that Snoop can win in the sky if a fight does happen. It's so funny because the creep is linked in the middle of the map, so Bly yeah. walked across the map really quickly here. But with this many spores, it's going to be very hard for him to attack into it. All right, how's Ultra he going to do this? Some work. He's not ready. He doesn't have Ultra of his own. There's six Ultralists out here. Not currently there, but there will be shortly. This uh, so no, is going to be now. very important. Parasitic Bomb going down some of these Mutas here. And Bly is crushing through, I think. He's crushing through. Or it, uh, it's so difficult to see. The Ultralists just are not being yeah. touched. They're slowly They're taking out dying. the spore cores. There's still a bunch of Mutalists left over for Bly. Queen's in support as well. Can Snoot defend here? He's still got quite a few Look Mutalists. Look at the supply. Bly is so far ahead. And Bly's moving forward now. There's, there's very little left. Every Ultralist has done so much damage. A great fungal onto this. And then Bly turns around. He's still got Vipers in support, which do have enough energy for another Pacific Bomb. Hashtag Bly on fire, man. Hashtag Bly on fire. And he moves into the second base, taking out the fourth, and does so rich behind this as well. He doesn't even care. Even if this was to be pushed back, he still would have the economy to remake another Snoot. army. Snoot is broken. I think he lost. And, and Bly has so much money. He's, he's got more Ultralis on the way. The, the Mutalist got really close, so that's actually a little bit dangerous, of course, as if the air dominance goes heavily in favor of Snoot. But I think Bly's got it. This is a crazy, crazy game coming out from him. The double uh, returning defending win. champion here, Norway, in a bit of trouble against Ukraine. That's about to go up 2-1 here in the first series of the bombs. day. He's going to do a lot of damage to these Mutalists, and hopefully now Bly takes the game with the Sky win. And these Mutalists should be looking to take down absolutely everything here. And what a crazy game. The rush up to the hype, the look for the, the combo move, and that is going to be enough. GG, Snoot, Norway's number one, is taken out by Bly. Hashtag Bly on fire. Woo! Is it finally going to trend here after this game? <laughs> Maybe. But that is a huge win for him. Yeah, very nicely done, actually. Uh, that move for the Vipers, yeah. even though like the initial attack was defended properly, behind this, he just did what he had to. Bly with some pretty clever play. You know, it's funny because in the interview, when he was asked about the Korean players, you know, he, I feel like he was, yeah, he was probably... Joking, but at the same time, maybe not entirely in saying that, you know, they don't know how to play this game yet. Bly's been playing since the beta for a very long time. He's and he has played lots and lots and lots yeah. and lots. He has a lot of uh, Legacy of the Void experience, maybe even more so than Snoot. So this may, might have played a role here in this matchup we just saw. And now Ukraine pulls ahead with 2-2-1. Two, two, yeah. Big, big moments now. And unfortunately... Targa has to come out. Yeah. Snoot's down and out. Snoot can be revived later on, of course, in this best of seven with three players each. If you do lose all of your players, you have a choice to revive one of them, which then must carry your team through in hope for a reverse kill, which you'd be looking at Snoot more than likely to be revived a little bit later on. But for now, uh, Snoot's gone. Bly naturally going up against Targa is the last remaining Norwegian player. Bly takes this. They go up 3-1, where Snoot would have to reverse kill out the Ukraine. So a big moment now for them, and that is a big, big win. Absolutely. Yeah. Targa is, he's always been a guy, you know, that was doing very well on ladder, but had a little bit of a hard yeah. time 
translating that into good results in tournaments. So now he gets another opportunity. You know, Nation Wars is one of those tournaments where we've seen him do well at times. So he, I see his Grandmaster uh, right now. So maybe, uh, maybe a good performance out of him. But yeah. Bly, he looked on fire here this last He year. looked <laughs> great. He looked fantastic. That was so and bad. Hopefully Targa's uh, got what it takes to be able to take him down. It is, of course, Targa's debut in Nation War Season 3. And like every other player we have, he has a couple of words to say about Nation Wars 3. Uh, the most special part about the Nation Wars is that we already won it twice. So it will be really awesome to win it uh, the third time. I'm super happy that the Nation Wars is going on again. It's um, one of the coolest tournaments, I think. Um, it's fun because it's like different. There's not too many team leagues anymore, especially for Europeans. Uh, so you get the team feeling. Um, we prepared a lot as a team last time. and. I think we're going to do some preparation this time as well. So it's just different than any other tournament and more fun. Uh, I really hope the French crowd comes out, uh, comes to the tournament again and it's as massive as last time. And uh, if we make it to the final, I hope they cheer for us, and especially Aiki. Like they seem to love him last time. So I hope we, uh, I hope we meet them again. Getting the third title is really hard. And uh, this time there's a Korean team <laughs> and uh, it's going to be much harder for us. To be honest, I don't think we have uh, any chance whatsoever to beat them. I think we would be really happy if we could get the second place uh, as long as we touch them. Um, but yeah, the, um, getting a third title was, would be absolutely amazing. But uh, it's, I think we have to be realistic over here and uh, our chances are not that high. Our group is not that hard, I think. I, like, I haven't played much Legacy, so I don't know how good they are, but I'm guessing Dimaga is not that active anymore for Ukraine. Um, I don't think China got the best players, and I have no idea about Taiwan. Snoot is probably better than all of them. Uh, right now, I've played maybe 25 games for the past three days. Uh, like I just bought the game on Friday, I think. Um, so it's hard for me to say how good I am. I'm probably one of the best Zergs if I get the f like maybe 30, 40 more games. Um, I have some builds that I think might work against uh, players that I play the game a, a bit more than me. I hope that everyone will cheer us on once again. Um, I really hope we get to go to France and. Uh, uh, play in front of the big crowd, uh, and I hope that we're gonna be that we'll be able to surprise everyone and maybe beat uh, Korea if we get to the final. Long way to go yet, still in group stages as day one of Nation Wars Three is now underway, and of course to play in front of the French crowd, you need to be top four of this tournament. So a long, long way to go yet, and of course Norway are now trailing versus the Ukraine one of our qualified teams into the main tournament. A little bit of a Natty Wise statement here. We were saying, uh, I'm one of the best Zerks if I play around 30 more games. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Ion Terraces is our next map. We'll see if he can... Uh, he's played a little bit more games than he did when he took the interview, but it's time to jump in to the next map. Prime Terraces, of course, with multiple gold bases all over. Let's see if they can be utilized in game number four. It's down here to the bottom right-hand side, opening up like he just did. It is, of course, from the Ukraine, the team captain, Bly. That was a bit of a pig growl there. Bly. <laughs> with a red eye impression. Red right eye. And uh, his opponents <laughs> starting in the top left-hand side, playing with, with the decal of Harstem. It is, of course, Targa playing for Norway. Team captain versus team captain. Yeah, but Bly just beat Snoot, so... Yeah, it doesn't, I don't know. doesn't say too much. Yeah, I'm not sure that being the captain matters here for Targa. He's going to need a hell of a game here to take out the yeah. man who is seemingly on fire. I'm sorry, but I just can't stop using this pun. He's playing great. He's doing really, really well. Uh, but they both have opened up with almost identical builds. A slight difference in them, but both aggressive openings. And we'll see. When you play fire with fire, naturally Bly has an advantage. Because Bly's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, I mean, so is Targa then, if he's using fire. Yeah, he's using it. Doesn't mean he's on fire. Shouldn't you use water against fire? You should. You should. If I, if, 
What are you going to do against Blight? I'm going to use Squirtle. <laughs> <laughs> Is the perfect that was counter. horrible. It's <laughs> a perfect counter. Or oh, anybody from Liquid. Anybody oh. from Liquid, yeah, man. I'd, I'd use a player from Team Liquid. Unfortunately, that was Snoop, but he lost. Like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have Blight running Lings around again, whereas Targa's darting through the middle, and they've both opened up identical at this point. It's funny how Targa just ran across the map immediately, whereas Blight's trying to be tricky. I feel like this could have gone a lot better for Targa, but now he's kind of second guessing yeah. where there could be a hatchery. I think he's realizing now it's one base against one base, so he's going to need to be careful back at home. Lynx. Yeah, it's a, it's about a game of attacking and defending at the same time now. And can you control on two fronts? Four right Bandings now, being morphed on that side of the map here, the top side. Already two Lynx for free there for Blight. Well, he just keeps one of them alive. And here we go. Let's, let's see how this works out. There's Bainlings being morphed on this side, but Blight takes another good fight. And he continues to take small little victories, but the queen comes down. And here we go. Banelings for drones, anybody? And is he going to get a good hit? Two of them go. Good splits from Targa. Only gets three from that. Yeah, but that's a lot. Three drones is a huge part of the economy here of Targa. It's not 14 drones for Black. It's 12 for Targa. I think if Black just keeps on making units there and plays a little bit more aggressive, like, yeah. he's actually going to be a mistake because then he'd be shut down by these queens and Banelings. Bly's got so many small victories. He's going to go forward again. Two queens blocking the ramp. And this may be a signal for Bly to probably expand himself now, knowing that Targa is on full lockdown. Got to be careful here. What Bailings. is that queen doing down there? Oh, I'm not sure, but these Banglings on the hunt to get inside the main base. One of them's going to go through. Not going to get targeted down. Good defense here from Targa. And he is going to eliminate the Bly threat. Oh, the drone gets it. One additional drone. There's a four drone difference between the both of them. That's pretty massive at this stage in the game here. Taga's now now got more uh, units, but Splice is just going to catch up here. Get some of his own Zerglings. Neither player started a natural hatchery. It looks like Taga might be the first one to try and go for it here in a second. Yeah. I don't think Blaze going to be too far around the corner, but there he is as well. And he may be able to get a kill here if he's fast enough, Taga. The Bailey's... Ah, uh, no, he's a bit too far away. Ooh. Can he get a cancel here or make something happen? I don't think so. With Queens being there and Banelings being morphed now, this could be very dangerous for Taga if he overcommits. If he throws everything away here that he's got around well, there. Well, the Lings are already in this second base area. He's going to try and go for a kill here. Not sure that's good. The one Bailey comes in for Taga, but he doesn't get a hit. And so far from by, he's looking to get every single Ling here if he can. Banelings coming in. Get the hatchery. Oh, he could have maybe gotten the hatchery. Oh, that's pretty good defense. Ah, I could split there. Get and back home. Get back home, you. No, nothing here. Nothing to be seen. Both players starting to climb up in links. It's still four drone lead for Bly. And it's both of them ramping up their unit count once again. Bly's taking another guess, by the way. Are we going to see the usual Bly drop down a roach warren, get a bunch of roaches, Ravager, head across the map and try and end it? That's what he does like. And with the gas, that's what it would signal. You don't need that much gas for Ling Bailing, that's for sure. And he is still building drones. He's got to be careful not to get hit by an attack while he's trying to do it, though. As more Bailings get morphed in and more units, circlings that has been made. Yeah, Rotron being <coughs> dropped down now from Blaze. So we're going to see that again here. He's just going to add a few more drones. Yeah. How many... Hey, actually, he made a couple overlords in advance. Not that many, but he's 38 supply he's out of 52 he's right gotta now. He's got to be careful here. He's got to be very careful. Queen's going to target down the Banelings. Good target fire wow. from Bly. Very good. Takes down two. He starts three more drones, though. He's trying to squeeze out as much economy to power up this Roach, Ravager, Zergling, Baneling, whatever you want to call it, attack. Do you think he queued maybe multiple injects on some hatcheries? Because his queens weren't next to his hatcheries. How do you like, by the way, the, the new inject? That Love you it. Can? Love it. It helps a lot. Because for me, I start to bank up a lot of energy quite fast. And you can get rid of it really easy. You got 75 don't energy. Don't be so modest, man. Shift, click, click, click. 75 energy is gone like that. Or you got 100 energy. Click, 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 click. I've seen you inject. They're pretty neat. Uh, sometimes. Only on special occasions. <laughs> yeah. Funk has this in English. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Roach is being made for Bly. Roach won't finish up at a good time for Targa, obviously. Where he can get his own Roach out. That's a huge number here. 10 Roaches. I'm not even sure Targa has uh, 10 Lavas. Well, we'll see in a second. Eight. Coming out for Targa. 
Not bad. If he Cons can keep up, that, that'd be good. Yeah, he's very close. They're but very close. Blaze, it seems like he's quite a bit richer. He should be able to get way more units. And in, especially in terms of Ravagers. Like, if he gets way more, he's going to have a great advantage. That is true. He does have a lot of money in the bank. Got more supply open as well. Yeah. That's less Larva he needs to spend to go uh, yeah. into over Overlords. And this is kind of all due to how his defense was early. And it gave him an advantage, which is now being clearly shown. Five Ravagers. More units being walked in. Can Bly find a way to go 3-1 up against Norway? And he's marching forwards. It's not going to be an easy defense from Targa. Maybe some crosshead bars can turn the tide. He marches down. Fires a shot. Oh, he's got to be careful. Four crossing bars do nothing there. His defense is going to be so hard there. It's 46 army supply to 40. Targa is going to pull back. Misses a lot of those very important shots, but he's got a good surround here around the he army. He does, and he's doing okay in the defense here. He's got a counterattack on the other side. Not too sure how that'll go down. But Bly continues to push forward. Are we going to see more reinforcements coming out to assist in the defense? Or is Bly going to be able to take this map and move up three games to one, going on a 2-0 killing streak? And that is the last unit currently down, and it is taken out as Ling's flood in. And Ling's are not going to be good enough with Bly waypointing more over to the other side of the map. The team captain... An all-star from the Ukraine in recent times is looking like he's going to oh, carry gonna get his more team through. He's already sniped five here. And another queen goes down. Another one bites the dust. And he continues his assault through. And this is absolutely fantastic from Bly. Great he's on play, fire. Great game. He's on fire. He really is here. Targa's down. Targa's out. And they are going to be forced to revive one of their players. Who is it going to be? Because the defense is not possible. GG Bly. On fire today, goes up with two games in a row, taking down Snoot, their best player, and then target their team captain. Bly, 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 bly. So I guess now it, it has to be Snoot, right? I, I really don't see who else. It it's, has to be. He should be the best player by it far has here to be. on uh, Team Norway. Yeah. Even though he was casting recently at Dreamhack, that's because sadly he wasn't qualified for it. But not too long before that, Snoot won a tournament over in China. So he should be in good shape. Yeah. But so far, the one game that he played against Bly earlier wasn't successful. And now it's Targa that goes down here to Bly. I think, was it Nation Wars 2 or 1? That um, maybe 1. Norway actually lost the game in group stages as well. Yeah, they, in Nation Wars 1, they beat Poland. And then in the winner's final, they lost to Russia to beat Poland again to go through. They went through in second place, yeah, yeah. then won the whole thing. So... They've, they've been in this position before, but this is a bit different now because Bly, on fire, continues to win. And in a couple of moments now, we are going to have a selection of who is going to play for Norway. But here are some tweets. I don't know if we have more than one. Thanks for sending it in. Oza X Nimloff. Hello. Came from work in time for some Nation Wars 3 action. Hype. With, of course, Johan, Merlo, Apollo, now Rotti and Funker. Here's another one by uh, Miu Glitch, making music on 4K 40-inch while watching Nation Wars on 30-inch. Hashtag NW3, hashtag attention fishing, hashtag StarCraft. Love it. Here's another one. At Tati GGTV, got my three <laughs> monitor set up just in time. Hashtag NW3. Hey, he's already he's leaving a hipster. 2016. <laughs> You're a hipster. You are, Tati. Your three <laughs> monitor set up. Thanks for sending your tweets. Do make sure to send in more if you are watching Nation Wars 3, I know a lot of you are right now on the English stream, maybe on the French stream too, send them in and we'll show them on the broadcast. Even if it's messy, don't be ashamed. I post pictures on my desk all the time and it's You can it's have the a worst. messy desk. You can have a messy floor. We don't mind at Nation Wars. That's why we show them. So send them in. And now it's time, more importantly, for the next player. Should I mean, be Snoot here, really. It's... I really don't see Snoot being like, I'm feeling bad, uh, somebody else comes out. It okay, should be Snoot, no matter what. All right, it has to be. It has Here we to go. Be. Two. It has to be. One. It has to be. Snoot. It Snoot. has to be. What? What are all <laughs> these T's? Okay. Oh, it's, <laughs> oh, who's revealed? You're teasing us, you are. <laughs> I was like, who's revealed? <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a reveal, he's not a player. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be Snoot, of course, the star player from Norway, in an assist and in a hope to make a reverse all kill. It's going to be long. It's going to be difficult because he has a long way to go. We're going to take a very brief break. And when we come back, Snoot attempts the comeback.
All right, guys, welcome back to Nation Wars, where I have replaced Sean, the man, Apollo Clark, even though nobody can truly replace him. Uh, some big shoes to fill. Yes. Are you nervous? Yes, actually, I am. And Sean actually really loves to listen to himself because these things are very loud. I know he has a beautiful voice, but I'd like to use my ears tomorrow as well. You should hear, you should hear Carolise. Yeah, he, no, he always I, has I it like all the way yeah. like to the max. And yeah, it's something that maybe the people at home don't know, but we can always set our own volume levels. And some people, they truly love listening to themselves. Well, you and me, I think we are both the yeah, one like of the few quiet. ones we have it very low. Like, yeah. you just barely hear me, barely hear. Maybe you hate listening to ourselves. Yeah, I'm not the biggest but fan of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Can I know how many says that in this business? Because, like, Kyle has to shout, so his excuse is that he doesn't want to stretch his yeah. voice. Over stretch. Yeah, over overextend. Oh, yeah, that's the word. Overextend. <laughs> <laughs> He's watching shout out to you, yeah. guys. There's been a lot of banter about stuff like that. Either way, I, sh I have been very surprised. And I mean that. Like, no, no, <laughs> not in that way, Todd. <laughs> not Gordon Ramsay no, surprised. No, I'm not Gordon Ramsay surprised. I am generally surprised. Like, I know that Bly has been good for a while. And Bly, is, you know, he's been getting better. He's been really posting some serious results. But for me, he's still always been the guy that has to do something a little out of the ordinary to get an advantage. But it truly seems that those days are over. And Bly is starting to solidify himself as one of the better players in Europe, man. The results he's posting yeah. lately... That's not normal anymore. That's not a fluke. That's not Bly on fire. No, that's Bly. What is Holland on fire? Bly in a how do you, uh, grease fire. <laughs> a stronger <laughs> fire. <laughs> <laughs> he's more than just on fire, Todd. Yeah, he's, uh, he's playing out of his mind. And I feel maybe he's being rewarded for his consistency. You know, throughout the journey of StarCraft 2, he's always played a lot yeah. and never really quit. So. Definitely a good time here to try and uh, pick at and do well in a, such an important tournament. I'm actually kind of happy for him because he's been one of the guys that always had a lot of love for the game, I felt. He wasn't just playing for his own success. He played because he generally enjoyed StarCraft. Yeah. We're getting ready. It's your favorite map, man. Yeah, is it gonna, he's going to be able to close it out on Central Protocol, a map that reminds me a little bit of Overwatch, that other beautiful game recently released by Blizzard, or at least the beta. Either way, on the laptop side of Central Protocol, we're looking at the main base of the man who has a couple of match points, it is Bly. Well, I guess potentially he just has to. He has to win this one. If he doesn't, then he could potentially revive himself. And his opponent starting in the bottom side of the map playing as the Red Zerg. It is, of course, Team Liquid and no way snoots. And who could have thought here, Todd, that four matches in, we're looking at a 3-1 lead for the Ukraine yeah. over Norway. Of course, Norway, are, you know, the Norwegians already said that they haven't practiced as much and this is not the same Norway as Nationwide Season 1 and Season 2. These are different times. It's a different game. But with Snoot doing so well at that recent tournament in China and Snoot just being Snoot, you still expect them as one of the absolute top dogs. You know, I yeah. didn't think there were a whole lot of players who, do, who could defeat Snoot. Has he been practicing that much, though? Because he was at DreamHack where he was casting. And, you know, that's quite a few days. It's mm -hmm. It was a three-day tournament. You traveled before and after. So five days in total where you can't really practice. Yeah, we know. Sure, you're watching games, but you're not, not walking on your mechanics and all exactly. that. So That's my excuse, yeah, Johan. And never also he was rooming with me. So it was probably uh, <laughs> exhausting to listen to my running about uh, the noise he made. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's always my excuse, you know, Roddy, why aren't you a pro? Like, well, guys, I travel so much, it's really hard to keep up. Uh, either way, we see Bly with another aggressive opening over here. He's only on 14 drones. This is a four-player map. Snoot has not scouted yet. I'm sure that he should expect this uh, at least a little bit because he's playing against Bly. Bly loves his aggressive openings, but once again, it's not yeah. the same Bly anymore. That's be aggressive or die trying. No, it's be aggressive. Oh. And if it doesn't work, he transitions. With the two overlords meeting here, I went full big here for a second. Uh, he realizes mm. that Snoot is on the mm. bottom left-hand side, so... Bly is going to regroup with the rest of his links, and this is this time around, there shouldn't be any transition out of Bly. It's going to be an absolute all-in, zergling speed, baneling, and he's going to try to bust his opponent and end it quickly. Snoot with the baneling nest on the way. Can he realize what's going on here? He's getting quite a few links. It seems like he has a pretty good idea what's going on. I would love to see a single spine crawler, though, by Snoot, because if this is one of those moments, Johan, where you feel that all he has to do is survive, then I think a single uh, baneling or a single spine crawler could actually help him quite a bit. Bly has to be... Well, he's probably looking for some juice. He uses all of the bailings immediately. He does get the queen and he gets a bunch of zerklings, but was that what he's oh, looking for? Well. He drops a bunch of links. Now gonna go straight for the queen. The bailing nest is not finished yet for Snoot. This might be Ukraine, the, the victory here, and their advancement onto the winner's match here, played later tonight. 
I mean, Fly. Snoot, yeah, Snoot can afford to lose a couple drones, though, but he's losing all the links that just hatched, and that's very bad. But he does have a couple of Bane links morphing. Bly is surrounding the Bane links. He's going to get the first one. He's going to get the second one as well. One Bane link will hatch, but a single Bane link for Snoot, is that going to be enough? I'm afraid it's not going to be enough anymore. Wow. Bly yeah. is actually just doing this, man. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be able to get the win. GG gets called. Wow. And Ukraine advances on to the winner's match here and uh, beats Norway. Who's, who are still going to be alive, but who are going to have to win two matches in a row to try and stay alive in the tournament. That's a big, big win. So no way. They're in the losers match. They won't play again tonight. And they'll get their chance tomorrow to try and qualify for uh, the round of eight. But a big, big win here for Ukraine. Yeah, and what a performance again by Bly. It all started off with that pretty crazy game between Dimaga and Aiki. That was a very funny, uh, scrappy little game. But ever since then, my Bly has just done a phenomenal job. Three minutes, 48 seconds. Yes, this was a real old school Bly game. But, I mean, Bly has shown us all, man. That first game against Snoot, he opened up aggressive. But he wasn't even in that great of a position. But yeah. he managed to just bring it to the latest stages in the game where he just had a better army and he had better engagements and now in the final game well a little bit of old school Bly magic but Bly truly on fire I'm very impressed Todd uh, it's actually an excellent performance again by him maybe he heard we are casting together so he wanted to put an end to this farce <laughs> so then it's yeah. it doesn't last too long which farce? yeah because like we, c we can get off track a little bit it was a joke Kevin. Uh, it's okay never mind no, no, I, you think Bly is a, is a fan of us? yeah I mean, he, he's known us since the Walk of Three Days. We yeah. have teased him for over seven years now, Todd. <laughs> if he's not a fan of us <laughs> so now, he's he not a fan of us. He's a big <laughs> hater. No, no, no. But yeah, a big performance here. I, I'm really surprised. Uh, you know, I thought that mm -hmm. there was a good chance that Ukraine could come out swinging, but I didn't think that against Norway they would take such a convincing win. What was your prediction? Norway 4-2, uh, I think, or 4-1. I think I had Norway 4-1 as well. So we had the 4-1, right? <laughs> Just the other way around. Yeah, well... Great start of the uh, week, I guys. I feel like you're doing about as well as you were at BlizzCon, yes. aren't you? Uh, and so are you. <laughs> oh, I finished over you at BlizzCon. Ooh, one spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you played it safe on the final Salt! night. Like, I went, like, Salt! before the semi-final started at BlizzCon, my predictions still had potential to win it all. Oh, are you kidding me? I, I was making, like, all the worst. I literally predicted Lilbo to win against life. So don't tell me about <laughs> going for the safe bet, okay? Like <laughs> no, but in the semi-finals, like, I, I could choose either between ending in the middle of a pack or still having a shot at winning the whole thing or finishing at the bottom. So, so hell go big or go home. Yeah, exactly. Just like your betting career. Exactly. You went home. So <laughs> I, I went I went all in and it backfired, but you know, I'd rather lose a bet than finish in the middle of a pack. Like <laughs> what's that all about, John? Either way, congratulations of course to Team Ukraine. We're going to see them later today as they will go up against the winners of China versus Taiwan, which is going to be the next match coming up on this stream. Absolutely, going to be pretty cool uh, to see these two face off. Mm -hmm. Destro made an awful joke on Remax. He was like, Taiwan versus China, to know which one is the real China. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> That's so bad. Yes. Destro, shout out to you for this. Uh, but I know it's going to be a cool match. Like, we know their players like, decently well as well. It's not like, you know, it's three names that we don't know on each team that will face off. And uh, some names in particular stand out. Has it's your favorite protos, right? Tom? Yeah. One of the one of the favorites, I think. One of the very the few men in history that made Todd laugh. <laughs> 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 there are about like three people and on this Kylais, planet. <laughs> he broke down Kailais. And the thing is though, like with Legacy of the Void, you know, coming out not too long ago, I'm really looking forward to see what Bills has uses because this guy is an innovator. He just uses stuff that you don't see anybody else do. Four gateways inside the opponent's main. Is it going to happen? Possibly. I can see it. Like, I, I f if I think Haas, I think of like a pylon into four gateway, probably some sort of weird gas transition at yeah. home, so you can like follow is it up it with a pylon rush. Is it hardcore enough though? I'm picturing more something like <laughs> one, one base, seven gates, one war prism. <laughs> <No. laughs> Even though we can't yes, support it economically. Something like that, but also pylons. I'm expecting pylons and money, yeah. of course. It's going to be super fun. I assume we're going to head over to a very small break, and after that, we'll be back with Taiwan versus China, or we have interviews as well. I'm not sure if we're going to have interviews now, but we're going to have everything, Johan. Yeah, we, I think we're supposed to do an interview. Cool. Usually uh, after the match, so if you guys are ready, then take it away. Okay, they're not ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love how they I, I wait until we say something yeah. and they're like, no. 
It's I, not this. I felt like we're already talking for way too long. We're stalling this. Like everyone in there is like, enough talking, show us the games. So how are you enjoying France so far? Well, Jon, uh, I'm a little bit tired because yesterday I had a lovely flight from Los Angeles to Istanbul with a little bit of a layover and then to Paris. So after traveling for 22 hours, arriving late at night and waking up very early this morning, being a little jet lagged, uh, I'm still having a great time. Yo, gaming studios are lovely. It's my first time here, but everybody's super friendly. They all seem to have like amazing relationships with each other. Yeah. All the men kiss each other as well. Wait. I kind of am a little somebody, bit sad that I didn't get any kisses. If you know somebody for a long time, yeah. you can do like the double kiss on the cheek like you will do for a girl. If you want, I'll, I'll greet well, you. No, I'll I greet you like this tomorrow morning, but don't be confused. Don't no. act weird. Don't no. make it weird. <laughs> because it's not weird. I will make it. <laughs> you know, yeah. don't, no, I, I know. If that. I start coming over, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to kiss you on the mouth. It's gonna be, uh, uh, if I, if I put my hand behind your head, don't <laughs> no, 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 hey. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at our brackets <laughs> real quick. Ukraine now, of course, taking that 4-1 victory over Norway. And China versus Taiwan is going to be our next match. What's the lineup for China? Is Max Hat playing, right? Max Hat is playing. Is yeah. Uh, I assume ISONU or IA? Let's take a look real quick. No, no, scroll down. It was there. No, yeah, that was Nations Y1. So it's uh, Max Hat, Tootming, and Jiba, yeah. actually. Okay, so two Zergs and Max Hat as the captain going up against Haas. Nice or nice? <laughs> it's probably nice. Nice. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know we're in France, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he's from Taiwan. <laughs> Would you, I want to see an interview with this guy. Maybe he calls himself Nice, and I'm going to laugh so hard. And Cheetos is going to be the Zerg from Taiwan. A great nickname. So not a single Terran was given in the next clan war, but, or nation war, I should say, but that's all right. Well, that's lucky for China, actually. You don't want to send a Terran against Haas. Because then the pylons down the true. ramp way against the wall of and depot would definitely will come true. I feel like it's maybe going to be harder to cheese against Zerg and Protoss. Even though against Protoss, there is quite a few cheeses here that we see. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the proxy robo, proxy stargate. Like, against Zerg, you got proxy gateways, any kind of adept all in or like mass gateways. So, has. I hope he shows up some good stuff. I want some inspiration. I don't know enough cheeses, I feel, in Legacy of the Void. I know very few. Yeah, I, I feel it's kind of difficult because you start with so Even many though workers. I watch stream. Sorry? Oh, I think. <laughs> So 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 <laughs> unnecessary. Uh, I'm a macro monster these days, okay? Uh, not in PvP. True. Are you? Uh, nah, I mean PvP. Does one truly have to you macro in Actually, PvP? I have this theory that a lot of people cheese in PvP because they don't want to do the stalker disruptor dance, yeah, which can I, I, be pretty difficult to exactly. manage. Exactly. It's very difficult and it's very like random as well in a way. It's not really random, but it's more like you play this 35-minute game. You feel, well, not maybe not 35, old school 35, you know, so let's say like 20 yeah. minutes. You feel like you're kind of on top of it and then you hear like your base is under attack. And you're like, ah, two adapts. And then you look back at your main army and your five disruptors are gone. And you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> he did not deserve that. So is the interview ready now, Johan? Yeah, it is. So cool. we're going to head there here with uh, an interview of the Ukrainian team. Guys, take it away. Hello, all French viewers and also French and English is also joining us. We have Yogo and my dear friend, Pete Drogo. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing very good. Good. How are you doing? Perfect. You guys are I love Bly. You love Bly? Yes. Why? Because it's so amazing. It starts StarCraft 2, like... He, he was just cheesing every time. On every everyone was like, "No, he's just bad cheesing," and now he's playing like decent. He's cheesing. He knows how to play macro, and he's one of the best player right now. What do you, what do you think? Well, it's weird. Like I feel the same as Yago. That at the, at the first he was like, "Yeah, blah." You just know what to do when he cheeses. I know it feels like he knows what to do always in Legacy of the Void. That's what it feels like to me. Best, the best. Uh, Bly, are you with us? Can you can you hear what we're saying about you? Yeah. yeah. Ah, there he is, and Tamaga. <laughs> Hello, Tamaga. Hello. Welcome hey to the guys. stream, boys. Congratulations on a big win. Um, Tamaga, let, let's first talk with you. We'll, we'll, Bly, I'm sure he's got a lot to say. So we'll start <laughs> with you, Tamaga. Um, how how was the match for you against Aiki? It was very difficult because I have not much practicing. Uh, but I think my experience in Brood War was <laughs> your experience <laughs> with workers? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you enjoyed the units really well. Yeah, it's like siege tank. You just burrow and burrow and pressure your opponent. Did you Pretty expect fun. to? Did you expect to win the first game? Uh, yeah, I think so. But when I lost uh, my fourth base, I think it's done. 
and yeah. I was just playing. Yeah. Were you about to, ty to type GG after losing the first base? Yeah, I was thinking about it, but I was just playing until the end, as always. And it's happened that I won. I don't know how. <laughs> well, uh, it was great to see you pick up a win today, buddy. Um, hopefully, you Thank can you. get another one uh, later on today. Yeah. Well, I, I have to, to, to talk to that about you. Uh, the hatchery, you put two bending in it. You could, have, you, could have, you could have won against Newt. Yeah. I was so hyped. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I, I didn't even saw that. Blight told me after a game, you like blow two bending into the head. I was like, no, no, what the fuck? I just I was so watched replays and I was like, what? It's just shame. Sorry for bad micro. That's all. <laughs> Do uh, you want to ask uh, Demago anything, or is Bly? Uh, I, have questions for, I have questions for Bly, but not for Demago. Sorry, Demago. Yeah. Go with Bly, go with sure. Bly. Uh, well, yeah, I guess what I want to ask is that, um, so far in Legacy of the Void, you've had really impressive results. <laughs> I mean, I'm just stating the fucking facts right now, so I, I guess what I want to ask you is that, what do you think puts you above the rest in Legacy of the Void? Like, the, that was different in Ertos' form. It's more fast-paced game, like way more fast-paced game, and like my strongest uh, sides was harassing, um, smart builder there, uh, and some kind of all -ins. Like even in macro game, I was trying to like sneak my opponent, and here uh, with Legacy of the Void, it's kind of it suits me so freaking much, like. I can drop lurkers, meantime harass with Muta, meantime run by with, with Link, and like you need so much multitask with this, which I'm like, I think I'm good at. It. So I think this is the reason. So you, sorry, so go you ahead, are ahead. really enjoying playing there because some players are like, no, 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 I want to switch race like Moro playing Protoss right now. Do you really enjoy Legacy of the Void as Zerg? Yeah, yeah. Because I have, like, with uh, Heart of the Swarm, I had to play defensive all the time. Like, all the time. Uh, versus Protoss, you had to hold Blink Stalker all in. Versus Terran, you had to hold 2-2 two -two push. Uh, in Legacy of the Void, you are able to attack. And you don't need to only, like, uh, play macro game with 90 drones and, like, trade efficiently. Uh, you just can you can attack you can you can run by like you have so much more poss possibilities over us all, always that is uh, that's what I love in Zerg right now. Okay, uh, I got a couple of questions for you. Then I'll I'll let Patrick Drogo do some. Uh, first of all, are you finally on fire? Is, is this it? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Finally, all right, great. Finally. Um, yeah. Second of all. It must have felt pretty good to beat Snoot once for you, and it must have felt even better to do it twice. Can you explain to us that, that you must have fist pumped, and you must have done something when you took him out the second time as well? Mm, the first time I was, it was a fist pump, yeah. Second time I was kind of, yeah. Get out of the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You are getting used to it, winning all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. After the first time, you just get used to it. So, yeah, kind of. I have something to, to ask about DBZ. Uh, if I remember correctly, in, a, in an interview uh, on Dreamhack, you, you were saying that in DBZ, you were like going coin flip to choose yeah. your strategy. Did you do yeah. it against uh, Snoot or it was all planned? Um, no, it's Nation Wars. I have to plan. Like, <laughs> yeah. If I can flip a dream, we don't have Nation Wars. <laughs> yeah, because like if I coin flip here, uh, I betrayed my teammates, and on Dreamhack, I came by myself. I mean, I'm playing, I'm solo. I don't care. Yeah. And here, hmm, like I have to take care of, of my team. You have the respect. At least, actually, at least I let them play at least one. Two games, okay. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> right. You are fair. Jogo, I'm please. so kind. Ask him <laughs> well, and Dima played really well. I guess actually. one last question for that. Where would you rank yourself amongst the foreigner? Like, are you top three, top one, top five? Where do you rank yourself at? I think top two. Ooh. Who's one? Who's one? Oh, yeah, who's one? Nurture. 
Okay. Did, did, did you think you could have done better against Showtime at Dreamhack? Oh, oh yeah. Like it should be zero three, uh, three zero instead of zero three. Like, like I just, I failed. Like failed really hard. And top of Reddit said it like how much I failed. Uh, I think like my my gameplay right now and my shape is is like top top from what what I could do. Like I felt like I could do like top three at Dreamhack, but fail happens. Is Zerg uh, is Zerg pretty strong right now? Is Zerg too strong? No, Terran was really strong. Yeah, okay, just... Like, uh, no, <laughs> Cass, is Cass. Like, Cass is like, oh, I don't know about that. I, I, I want Cass you, Cass. Like, really? Pretty interesting. Cass, are you, are you playing a lot feel now? Terran is very strong. I don't feel what Terran is very strong with this new Ultra Vipers ability, Lurkers and crazy Corruptors. I don't know. I, I feel like Zerk is really in power right now. All right, um, we're going to have to wrap this interview up. Uh, last couple of questions then. So you, you've gone through to the winner's match. Whoever comes through next, whether it's China or Taiwan, easy peasy? Yeah, sure. It, it, you, I mean, I guess we'll talk to you a little bit after, but do you have any concerns at all, or are you already first place after beating Norway? Who's playing for them? So China has Max said... I'm sorry. You're going to win? <laughs> wow, yeah. okay, like, all right, I got through one player. So, uh, okay, well... Very well done. I uh, hope to see Cass you play a little bit later on. want to see what you've been up to recently. Hopefully you get to show us some games. Yeah. I don't hope so. <laughs> I really hope. <laughs> Gus I hope will kill strategies. them all. all right. Gus is fighting his strategies for the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. So yes. He's saving it for I the top to four. I need to fight it before yeah, next yeah. tournament. <laughs> so my team will carry any, me on. Any last words here? No, no, just I hope to, to see you giving us some great game for the winner match. Yeah, congratulations, guys. Congratulations. We'll see you play in the winner's match. Ciao. Ciao. Have a good rest. Well, they seem to be in good spirits, of course. Yeah, the Spines have won. Of course, they're doing excellent. Uh, our next game is going to be China versus <gasps> Taiwan. There is Az. Has. I want to see Az. Yes. On Legacy. <laughs> Did you... <laughs> did you did you did you already saw him? On no, see? no. <gasps> Heightened economy, fast all-ins. Let's go. That's what we're gonna see. We're gonna go back to both respective streams, English and French, and then we'll get set up for Taiwan versus China. See you. All right, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was uh, that was quite the interview. I really loved Cass's face, by the way. That was the highlight yeah. of his interview. Where his eyebrows were like. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Because what did you say? Cass was like pretty much asleep. He hasn't played. He didn't really say a whole lot. Then I hear like Terran is really strong. He's like, like his Terran <laughs> radar whines go off. It's like red alert, red alert. It was kind of funny. He heard something outrageous and yeah. had to react to it. But uh, it's funny actually in StarCraft how everybody plays the weakest race, isn't mm -hmm. it? Not just in StarCraft, but in every RTS ever. Which is very, yeah. We're very noble people. <laughs> I've played the worst race both in Warcraft 3 and StarCraft 2. Me as well, that's pretty insane. Orc was the weakest race by far. If you, if you uh. didn't use the man with the sword, it was the weakest <laughs> race. <laughs> Actually, true, yeah, it's your defense. You didn't necessarily use the, um, the most OP hero. But yeah, nice interview, and uh, Ukraine can already, can already be proud of themselves. But they haven't advanced yet. Exactly. They lose their next two matches here, and they're going to be in trouble. But first, we need to decide here between uh, Taiwan and China who will advance. What do you think of this matchup? Um, I'm leaning towards China. I feel that China has pretty good players overall. Even though Taiwan, you know, they're definitely dangerous, and I feel this one is very hard to predict. Like, I mean, we are already surprised by Norway against Ukraine, so we can get surprised here as well. But I feel overall the two Zergs from China, they've impressed me for quite a while already. Uh, I especially think that Tutming is a very strong Zerg player. We've seen yeah, him back yeah. then in WCS America a couple of times. Very fast. I feel very on point in general when it comes to the game. Don't know about his legacy skills, but if this was Heart of the Swarm, I'm definitely leaning towards China, so that's kind of what I base my prediction of. I think yeah, all players from, uh, from China here, they have a very rich history in WCS, so mm -hmm. that's something they've got going for them, whereas for Taiwan, I mean, you look at Haz and you're like, yeah, sure, hype. Has he's gonna do his Jesus? He's gonna do his thing. But then the other two players, you know, Cheetos and Nice or Nice, Nice, <laughs> not quite as known. So. As long as we're in France, it's Nice, though. I don't. Who nicknamed themselves Nice? 
Like somebody who's well, been to the south of France once and was like, that's I mean, like, if I name myself Rotterdam, why wouldn't name someone himself yeah, Nice? Yeah, like he's not from Nice. <laughs> you never know. Maybe he migrated <laughs> from Nice to Taiwan. Maybe. <laughs> Actually. That would be one hell of a story. He starts up the interview later tonight and he's like, Bonjour, au revoir. <laughs> okay, me? <laughs> like, how funny would that be? Bonjour. Yeah. How are you so bad at languages, man? I'm not. You've been to France so many years, you can't even say hello properly. Mm. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> not bad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Ça va? Le <laughs> tout. Wow. Right. Yeah, in terms of bills, I'm really looking forward again to what has has to offer. God, this is going to be so hard to stay away from this word. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because like he's such an innovator that any time he does something, you should look at it and be like, okay, like if this looks good, I want to use it. I want to try it on ladder. Uh, I want to try to uh, find some success with it as well. Even though most of the time, it's builds that are pretty hard to execute, even though they look very simple when you watch him do them. So we'll see. Maybe yeah. some uh, some Roddy builds in there. I'm not sure. I don't think he's been watching the stream. Is there such a thing as a Roddy build in, uh, in Legacy of the Void, like in every matchup and every situation? Mm, no, there never has been a Roddy build in every matchup and every situation. No, there was. No, like what? Yeah, like uh, in PvP, like uh, Gate 11, Double Stalker Rush. Yeah, okay. Versus okay. Terran. <laughs> same thing, versus Zerg, same thing and forget pressure. <laughs> yeah. Proxy's target sometimes, that's another okay. dirty build. All right, Everything that's dirty, basically. Yeah, no, but I mean, it's, it's very hard to open up 11 gate in Legacy, Todd, unless I would kill one of the probes <laughs> inside of the game. <laughs> so Blizzard pretty much killed that build. Uh, no, in Legacy, we kind of switch it up, it's kind of go with the flow. Uh, I would say in PvZ, I do have my very trademark style, Phoenix DT, baby. It's the future, Todd. I'm telling you right now, Phoenix DT. I'm very skeptical, but uh, I guess we'll find out later as uh, we return after the break with China versus Taiwan. See you guys in a minute.